Coming to you live in Technicolor from the beautiful Hollywood Hills, California. The show where the total retail price of their advice is zero dollars. This is Timelines Talk. Featuring guest stars, Don LaFontaine's non-union equivalent, it's Dan Javin. Also featuring Joey, have you ever been in a Turkish prison? Look out, it's Automaton 2000! Your sleep paralysis demon, welcome Frank. And now, the man with the chatter, he doesn't have a bladder. Here's your host, Captain Idol! Yes, welcome everyone to Timelines Talks, the premium exclusive number one show for all things Star Trek Timelines. I am your host, Captain Idol, and I am joined as ever by my faithful co-hosts, Automaton2000, Frank and Dan Javin. Gentlemen, how are we this fine Wednesday evening to celebrate the penultimate episode, the 99th <laughs> party in like it's 1999 episodes of Timelines. You, you know it's serious when Idol gets in on the joke because he used to admonish us for saying that, and now I think we've all we're thrown in the towel. So, oh yeah, how are I haven't we heard all... that intro in months, so I'm happy to be here. Mm. I'm gonna repeat. You're so late. So. You're late for all of our Amer- American listeners. You're late. Uh, I think it's called <laughs> GMT Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. This is uh, the, that weird couple of weeks we have between GMT. Uh, like between daylight savings time in america and here why it's different we're all on the same planet i don't know but hey ho here we go we have got a monster lineup of stuff to catch up on mostly talking about new com- uh, continuum missions things um the borg queen you may have missed some janeway voyager collections new hon hall talking a little bit about the new tilting point discord the new objective event and crew you may have missed along the way and trade audits and things like that but First but of first, all, but first of all, hey, you all right, we got a, we got a throwback thing because I think we all have a little bit of adult beverage. Who's drinking what today? Go on. No, Go, you just oh. grabbed yours. Okay, fine. I have, a, I have a I have a hobgoblin ruby. It is. I like these because they sell them cheap and they sell them in pint sized cans. So <laughs> I go for quantity. It isn't all right beer as well? It helps. What kind it of beer? Helps. It's a kind of like it's a kind of like a, a dark, dark. It was a it's a ruby ale. Stout? Uh, oh, no, ale. not quite stout. It's more like a sort of like a like a dark, uh, just a, a dark ale. It's dark. <laughs> I, hold on, hold it's on. Ruby. I see Dan's all queued up. Dan, what are you drinking? Yeah, today? I was gonna say I've I've got I've got a little something to wet my whistle here. Hold on a second. <laughs> You've actually got one. <laughs> cerveza, <laughs> you actually got a cerveza crystal. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's uh for for those with keen eyesight. It's a okay, corona. okay. We just, oh, uh, oh, I should not. I don't think they make them anymore. Me. Certainly not outside you of Brazil. So. I thought you'd been like on eBay. And you're like, I need a Cerveza Crystal. I'll pay whatever. <laughs> Never <laughs> show the magic. That's like going on Star Trek and the doors open and somebody's like, "Wow!" and they go, "There's just a guy behind the wall pulling it. It's not that impressive." Pay no attention to the Cerveza Crystal behind the mirror. <laughs> Awesome. Frank, what about you? You got you have an adult beverage? Well, this is yes, they are adult. Uh, this is a special occasion we are celebrating today because I am finally quitting this stupid game again <laughs> this week. Is it that time? Pro- guaranteed. <laughs> By the way, who got uh, the last first to Max on the? So the it, I am <laughs> drinking a multitude of things. First of all, always make sure you're hydrated. So we're going to have some delicious Costco water. And you can't go wrong after that with some delicious energy drinks. And today we're having Kiwi Blend. And this is a accelerating metabolism for my workouts. I already drank that one. I've got another one right here. And then this one <laughs> in my shaker is my pre-workout made by a company called Gamer Subs. Not a plug. Uh, and it's got a lot of caffeine in it and a lot of other stuff that will probably give me cancer that I don't already have by tomorrow. Uh, but I can't tell you what it is because it's not safe for this Twitch stream. Uh, but it's very delicious and it's very good. And then I'll wash it down probably with more Costco water. Uh, probably so what, a pack of cigarettes too. I don't know. <laughs> and, and just, you know all of this and Idol will still have the first bathroom break of the stream. I guarantee. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ninety nine episodes are still going. Uh, what right, is it? A kiwi blend. A what is it? Is it? So 
I think it's something about Australians, but I'm not sure. Oh, no, no, New uh, Zealanders. Oh God, yeah, no, it's it's a fruit, and so uh, it's a kiwi. It's a fruit. Well, since and, Star- uh, I know what a kiwi today, is. Frank had to represent. Yeah. <laughs> but what what is it blended with? Like you can, otherwise, you've just got a kiwi drink. If it's a kiwi blend, it has to be <clears throat> mixed with something. Sorry, I'm being pedantic here. Carbonated water, citric acid, sodium citrate, natural flavors, caffeine, Panax ginseng extract, a soul of fame potassium, sucralose, ascorbic acid, zinc, grabbing ascorbic acid from every day. <laughs> salt, mm, niacinamide. I think that's a poison. Idol is uh, hoping we don't talk about any timelines today. By the way, so keep going, Frank. <laughs> oh. Medium chain triglycerides. Those Ooh, are good. Medium like chain. Massively flammable. Uh, oh, D. Show me the basic crystal. Please. Yeah, he was asking. I was trying to be uh, <laughs> on the download. Though. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's never going to get old. Uh, Otto, what are you drinking? <laughs> Wait, Frank's not done. Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> fruit juice. Ah. Any particular fruit? Turmeric, Olefferson. Turmeric's not a fruit. Uh, Rose. I used to go to school with tu- turmeric, Olefferson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. All right. I, 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 need a, I need to jump in before the Great Lakes Christmas Ale, which I'm Ooh. still drinking in March, which tells you how good it is. It's been sitting around for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, I'm already having a good time. Uh, let's talk about our fantastic people who help us name these shows every week, and we're going to go to the spin the wheel. Yes, we are. So thank you to everyone that submitted show titles. I'm going to promise once we're done with Timeline's Talks, I'm going to transfer this somewhere else so you guys can still submit show titles and maybe win us up to the site. If anyone actually claims them, I haven't actually paid anyone for this for ages because no one's actually said, mm. I need a sub <laughs> that I won. You guys need to contact me. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, let's spin And, and we the... still write it off. Yeah, right, yeah, taxes, absolutely. So. Of course you do. Right, let's I spin. just want to point out, my feelings are hurt. I submitted a show title. I'm not on the wheel. It's because hosts are illegible. The winner is Evans of Wales! Hold on. I know that's not true because a lot of hosts have won <laughs> while they've been on before. <laughs> um, I'll make it up to you. Anyway... We got some we got some timelines talks to talk to talk about, haven't we? What do we talk about with yeah, the timelines? Time just gonna bring the show down, huh? All right. <laughs> well, yeah, let's just go straight to the and fuck the rest of this. Okay, so uh, you may have noticed yesterday there was a wonderful refresh of everyone's favorite new feature, the continuum missions, and they eagerly woke up on Tuesday morning to go, "Wow, let, let's really get into this." Go, huh? Happens to be another fifth star of the ubiquitous Borg Queen available, and thinking. Wow, golly, fantastic, another week of this, great, I can get the fifth star, shame I already cited her, or, you know, maybe I didn't bother and maybe I've got another chance. Guys, how hyped were you for getting a fifth star? Did you even notice? I did. Actually, I was asleep at the time because it never works at changeover, so I don't bother staying up anymore, so I just went to bed. By the time I was up, it was fixed, or almost fixed, so... It was indeed. Within about three hours of uh, Ubiquity with Ball Queen being there, uh, the fix and patch went out and zoom, back to Dilithium. No new crew for you. I've eight seen... and a half hours. Eight and a half hours, okay. so She was alive for eight and a half hours. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not nitpicking here, but I'm just saying if anybody's going to shit on TPG because they're not doing a good job or not communicating well or making errors, Frank and his segment, sponsored by TPGerror.com, will probably be the one to call them out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we will be putting that website into chat just so you're aware of it. Um, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, how do you guys feel about this kind of... Because I kind of saw it coming. Like, I kind of wondered, like, yeah, they're just going to have this on an auto-renew and no one's going to switch the thing back. So I, I didn't cite, and then I, I wisely thought, hey, they're going to fix this fairly soon. So I spent 2,000 dilithium getting her, which is... It felt dumb doing at the time, but I thought, I, I don't really <laughs> care. <laughs> so let's just see what happens. I, I kind of figured, like, if they keep her up for the week, I've lost 2k dilithiums, but they didn't, so I'm, I'm fairly justified. But I know a lot of people, after being told, yes, there will only be four uh, four copies available, cited their first one, or cited eventually. Um, uh, uh, guys in chat, tell us if you were one of those people. Guys here, were you one of those people that cited and went, oh, look, there's another copy. Shame on me. I'll start a poll before I get blasted. Okay. 
Yeah, well, I was working on that. I, I had done the math, and I, I had seen it at changeover that she was still up, and I was like, yeah, this would cost me maybe about 3,000 dilithium. I had yeah, to just pulled the trigger and did it, but then I was like, I'm tired, and <laughs> maybe, you know, rest is good, too, and so, yeah, I just went to bed, and I was like, you know what, I'll let it ride. Maybe I can get her for some chronotons. Maybe TP will just kind of leave her up for the week and say, hey, you know, uh, happy happy New Year, whatever, you know, happy April Fool's. Um, but yeah, she got taken away, and I'm not. I'm not better about it. I just spent the site. It was a lot easier. It was, yeah. Um, it comes back to the the conversation, like how much do you think a site is worth in terms of like dilithium or uh, resources in game? Because all up in chat, we've had. Um, I had this discussion the other day, and um, like you know, you, you talk about Mirror Tuvok, and he's five thousand dilithium for a star in the in the faction store. If you're lucky to get him on rotation, I feel like. You know, I'm not that I'm trying to justify what I did, like spending two thousand, but little two, two and a half thousand on uh, dilithium, just like refreshing the missions. But I wonder what you think. Like, is it worth kind of doing that? Like, just thinking in the future if they do this again, which probably <laughs> there's are strong. no chance they make a mistake again. <laughs> They've learned their lesson. Oh, of course, it yes, won't happen again. The the game we, we're not the game developers, so you know we we we, we couldn't comment obviously. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm waffling too much. Carry on. I'm fairly certain when the next legendary crew reward pops up and they're put up that over on, and something we'll discuss later, TPG's official discord, the best place to talk to them. Apparently someone <laughs> will say, Hey guys, just so you know, you're putting this up for four weeks. This is the end date. Somebody get a calendar that you can share between your employees across the globe. And the people who are responsible for it have a calendar pop up and an invite and a reminder like 30 minutes before to say, hey, remove this crew. Just something. I'm sure somebody will post that in the TPG Discord just to give them a friendly reminder. If not, there it is for free. Who knows? It will happen again. I promise. Uh, so despite being, I think, the only one who's not a parent here, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> we all knew it was what was going to happen. Everyone knew they were going to screw it up somehow. And the point is, or the, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't really matter. It was up a couple hours. You can see in our poll, 90% of the people weren't affected by it. I can't get mad about that. But it happens with alarming regularity, hence the new websites keeping track of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, we actually gave them a lot of credit about, about the middle of last year. So last January, there were a whole bunch of layoffs. I think I heard some estimates over 50% of the workforce was cut. Ouch. I talked with a few of the devs afterwards who had some strong feelings about it, really great people. Um, but we were giving them credit for months because the content train kept running and things were clicking all right. And I think now we're starting to see the wheels squeak a little bit, wobble a little bit. Uh, you know, they've offloaded a lot of stuff. Tilting Point has taken over. Uh, you know, Wicked Realm Games is actually kind of a thing of the past now. Um, and so, you know, for better or for worse, they have a Discord up and they're making changes, but I think the game itself, we're just seeing these regular little errors and it's like, it's, it's, it's death by a thousand cuts. I think it's starting to become, and you know, if you're a casual player, you don't mind the little, um, the little upsets. Uh, that's fine. Keep playing, keep enjoying the game. I got 300 free dilithium for doing nothing this week, uh, <laughs> in an apology letter. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm not dooming and saying it's it's gonna die before the end of the year, but I think we're starting to see the crack show of having a skeleton crew run mm. for for too many months. I think like um, we, there was a glorious moment. I think it like oh, I can't remember. It was recently after the layoffs where we we're all pretty down and we we're all just like Jesus Christ, they've done this and this horrible moment. Then we were got contacted by a couple of or at least one of the devs who says, yeah, well, I'm, I'm still working on this, I'm working hard, and, you know, they implemented a lot of, you know, I made a post on the forum saying, like, there's a lot of quality of life stuff that this game needs, like, there's lo loads of stuff, and that was taken note of. Um, and then he came out and said, yeah, I've done these things, like the put putting in the, the text that says, this crew is frozen in blue <laughs> in, in the Behold screen. Little things like that, lots of little in quality of life improvements that were starting to get worked on. Then we got a message saying they were leaving for better opportunities, and there has been zero since then. So there's a moment where we're just like, okay, maybe this might actually be like resourcing management a little bit better, but mm, doubt a little bit because ever since then it has been kind of like going on. There have been errors there. Well, check the website. See, you know, you can see TPG. Was it what was the website again, Frank? Sorry, 
tpgerror.com. And that's that's just one of many. If yeah. if you're not aware of my extent and and the levels that I will go to to shit post and troll <laughs> if I'm unhappy, <laughs> if you haven't been around since 2016, strap in, folks, because the guy who used to own the studio and run the game, John Radoff, who founded it, I wrote him a letter and had it FedEx to their office, and it was hung up in their break room. <laughs> And then I flew to Boston to meet him to tell him, hey, I was serious about that letter, asshole. And he was a nice guy. I didn't say asshole. I might have stubbed <laughs> my toe. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, it's – and here's the thing. There's there's several things at work. The layoffs were a big gut punch, and that sucks. Anytime there's layoffs with any kind of company in any kind of industry, it hurts quality. I don't care what anybody says. When you've got 10 people doing a task – and you reduce that count by 30%. Now you've got seven people doing a task. There's going to be stuff missed. There's going to be a lot of stuff that just has to go by the wayside because there's only so many hours in a day, and everyone there is human. And humans naturally don't want to take on a huge workload that they may not be compensated for or somebody else just got cut, especially if they're friends. A lot of us have had the fortune of meeting a lot of these people and talking to these people, uh, they've been here on the stream several times. Really great people, cool people. Lovely S people. Stuff that you can interact with them. They've all donated to the charity, given their time. Like, cannot say enough nice things about the the team at TPG, formerly WRG, formerly DB. I've, I've loved everybody I've met there, even Radoff, jokes aside. Um, but... The reality is, when you take a step back, you realize it's a mobile game. It's a business. Businesses have to run certain ways, no matter our personal feelings towards it. And Ben and Joe, who are still the only original real holdouts of this whole thing from years ago, they have bosses. And those bosses have metrics. And those bosses have shareholders. Plans. Yeah. And and there's, there's a path forward that they're going to take. And if it's not something I agree with as a player... Too bad, because the bosses are calling the shots. And for those of you not aware, that's what's happened for the last few months, because the people working on this game had to go work on a different game at the same time they're working on this game. Yeah. That's and kind of my sticking point at the moment, really. It's just like the Legend stuff has come out, and it's been like, I wasn't expecting all of a sudden, oh, Ben and Joe are working on Legends as well. It's like, wait a minute, you guys you guys have got a game. Like, what, what, what's going on here? Like, there was never kind of expectantly, you know, nothing was expected of, from us to say, like, oh, yeah, by the way, we, we, we don't run this. Nothing was, nothing was come out saying, like, oh, yeah, WRG are taking on this, or Ben's now overseeing things in TP. We've never had... Like, uh, not that we expect them to divulge all the secrets, but it'd be just nice to say, like, hey, the guy we've been talking to, our community liaison, the guy that's come on streams, like, what does he do now? Like, is what point in TP is he? Is he overseeing, like, um, WRG and Emerald Game Studios? Or is it all just kind of a mishmash of, we'll just talk to someone when something needs doing? Daniel, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'm just happy that we still have a game to play. There's been some some stumbles, right? I'll be the apologist here. Uh, you know, the the events are still engaging. The the writing's still fine. We got to meet the writer a few weeks ago. That was fantastic. Um, you know, there, there's still a lot of meat here. The artwork is fantastic. We'll talk about that later on. We've got a whole lot of really great artwork to talk to you guys about today on stream. Oh yeah. Um, so you know, it's for the people that want to play and and mini max and and really dive into the game. It, it's still here for us. Uh, and you know, these these stumblings aside. They're understandable. Uh, you know, we, we've taken a crew that was slashed to 25% of their former strength and then asked to do twice as much by adding another game onto their workload. Um, you know, right, the cracks are showing, uh, but we still get to play and we still got new content planned for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, I'm happy as a player, so that's all I can say. Yeah, I'm, I'm still right, playing, let, let... so like, you know, I'm not not playing, but I think it's more for the fact I've just put it so much into my habit in my days, like, wake up, check my voice, just do my dailies. And then, like, if, if suddenly that was stopped, I'd be like, I, like when a smoker quit smoking, like I don't know what to do with my hands. It'd be that kind of thing. <laughs> Flattering. Um, mm -hmm. Let me back up for a second. For podcast listeners, were you affected by Ubiquitous Board Queen's fifth star being available? 91% were not affected. 9% spent resources right. to get them early and did. Um, yeah, so the, the other part of this is we had a Continuum Missions patch a little while ago. Uh, and I guess I didn't pull that up. 
to read off of. I, I guess it doesn't really matter because there were, there were about, what, 60, 50, 60 changes to individual equipment. Um, and when I'm done talking, I'll throw up a poll. But it looks like they're, they, they nerfed a little bit the general equipment, made it a little more expensive, but they introduced more trait-locked ones to kind of push you toward very specific crew. So what do you guys think about that change? The timing of the patch, uh, was it a good patch? Are they going in the right direction? That kind of thing. This will be a great moment to plug the Big Book Podcast for anybody who's looking for an audio version where we go in depth about. And the I'm not on it, the, so it's fine. You can enjoy the, it. <laughs> yeah, no, no British people. Equipment. But but seventy five percent of the uh, the people you're seeing here right now are. Uh, so if you're you're curious for a little bit deeper insight, please feel free to join and, and take a look. Take a look. Take a listen, if you would. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll defer to uh, to you, Idol. What are your thoughts on this? The problem is, and I you know I've tested it now, is that. You can still do it with six crew. Like I've been, my, I've said this many times about you know continuum missions. Is just if you haven't got them, just retrieve the really good crew. Get you or get Captain Tribble. Get the what? Get those six crew. They'll get you through. I, you know, I, I've said many times that my crew are Captain Tribble, Demo Man Scotty, Bones McCoy, um, Gary Seven, Breen Kira, and. Verini, Verini. I don't remember who All I was using. All up in chat, folks. Yeah, and I use those for every mission. Occasionally, there comes a double, and I have to put on like another sec or something else like that. I use those six crew for every single mission. The traits, I don't give a shit. I don't care about those. There's, they, they don't matter because I just power my way through them. Me and Auto were talking about this. Actually, was it this morning or was it yesterday? Um, about like you know, I think they should have locked out nodes, or they should have a harder difficulty that you cannot complete. Um, that makes it extra hard because at the moment it's too easy and these changes that they've done yeah great you can use frank hollander you can use uh ilea but who the fuck <laughs> that's just what i wanted actually <laughs> but who the fuck would like maybe you're a new player and you've got ilea or you've got frank hollander go great i i can now use these um you meant but why would you spend the time Dude, if you're a new four player stars you need them? six you need six immortal crew exactly even- so or elizabeth yeah irony it says elizabeth denner and like you know why would you put stars on these crew just so you can make them quick viable when you could retrieve better crew it's still it's like i like continuing missions because it gives me 250 quantum every week that's my favorite part but the actual doing the missions is 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 what i i think part of it was what i was expecting earlier on was like oh great we get to do missions i love doing away missions I really do. And their ideas of like, hey, you can use traits and use different crew. Brilliant. Sounds good. But they haven't tweaked it right. They haven't done things like, like, and, and I talk about, you know, locking out crew, locking out nodes, unless you have a crew with this trait. I actually think they should do that. I think there should be a fail condition. I think there should be weeks where I can't do it because I don't have this crew. And I don't think the- I'd be too unhappy with that. It sounds, I know a lot of people will disagree with that, but I, I feel like that's where the challenge should be. The I'll other part of the team. balance that you talk about where uh you know oh hey now frank hollander and elizabeth dinner these are and, and the the fucking binars like yay here we go those crew are only good for seven days and then they're shit again unless you spend all the material to make them non-shit again you, yeah. you know he's really going in hard when he stares at the camera and talks to your soul <laughs> all right keep going frank <laughs> So, like, what's what's the point? Are you going to continue to spend your materials that you have to do multiple passes through to get enough, like, med stuff to make Elizabeth Dinner usable every week? Shit, no. Use somebody else that's worthwhile. I'm like Apollo in chat. There's, like, achievements in the game right now that no one has completed. Not a single player out of the player base has or may yeah. ever complete one of the achievements because it's so stupid how much you have to do you have to unlock four slots literally on every crew in the game right now almost just to clear that achievement and then you get a really cool crappy avatar spoiler alert um so like what's the point i'm supposed to be following these achievements and clearing achievements and unlocking stuff on crew but i can't because now i have to use these decrepit 2016 legendaries to get special equipment to have enough power just to clear the board like why that changed my play style entirely and made stuff more expensive. It's just, you know... We, we came across it with that fleet boss battles as well, because that was the idea of that was like, hey, use different crew to get different results. You know, we're going to focus on ship battles, but then it, it very quickly just turned to like, here, here's the meta, go. 
And I think any time you have a game, and I think it's sort of a problem that Pokemon encountered, like they just went, here's the meta for the best team. And games like Marvel Snap as well, like here's, this is the current meta for beating the opponents 70% of the time. But you've got to keep things fresh and like have been able to move that meta. In this situation, you can't. Because we, we, you know, everyone just finds the best solutions. Everyone finds those, the best solutions with the minimal amount of input possible. And this game just encourages that. Dan, you're on the edge yeah. of your seat. Go on. Yeah, yeah, there's a few things to say here. So first, we haven't really had uh, uh, nerfs of cards since, was it, I, I think, probably after Polywater Yard, but not not far after. So to credit to, to TVG, they know to keep their hands off things that people have already invested in. Um, but it's a little bit different here with equipment because now we're dealing with something that, that can rotate in and out and can change. And they're, they've telegraphed that they're willing to, to make these adjustments on the fly. So my question is, you know, so if we if we decide to invest in in the, in the chat, we're talking about the binars here. So if we decide to invest in, in getting our binars maxed out, maybe we were on the fence before. Maybe it's just a couple of gold sites left. Um, you know, might they do something for me? Well, what happens down the road? They may not touch the card, but they may certainly touch the equipment. They've shown us that they're willing to. So, um, you know, that that puts a real damper on my desire to really explore a whole lot. Um, that said, I, I have been tweaking my uh, my continuum missions lineup a little bit, trying to explore other uh, top light voyagers that can get benefit from some of the new equipment that are coming out. Um, so there there's a little bit of gameplay there, and I've been enjoying that. Uh, in the end, though, I. I feel it. it's more of a treadmill. It's kind of tough to just keep earning these equipments, and especially uh, when when the the pain point, and we've been talking about the med equipment being so mm. so rare of a drop lately. And you know, if we want to run the continue missions every week, we've got the surplus of command and dip and sec equipment, but we have to keep going. We're forced to keep going just to get those med databases. Uh, you know, if if we don't, then we miss a few weeks, and now we're still equipping and sending them into the gauntlet on voyages. Then then how are we going to continue to to compete? So that's a little bit insidious too. I you know I'm not I don't feel. Like, uh, I have the freedom to phase in and out when I want to. Maybe it'd be a great time to take a few weeks off now that we're back to Dilithium Rewards on Epic, but if I do, am I going to run out of med equipment? That's tough. Yeah. For podcast listeners, what do you think about the latest Continuum Missions patch? 45% says the wrong direction. Go back. 27% ask, what about the med equipment problem? 18% say they have to see more, and 9% think it's uh, they're doing great and they're in the right direction. I'm talking uh, about... I, I can't get... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, talking about that med equipment uh, problem, this was something that people faced when all of a sudden, hey, there's a gold crew available in the in the epic tier of, of CM missions. And um, people were just like, oh, God, I've never touched this, but I want that crew. And all of a sudden, they were just like, oh, I, I actually can't complete it. Because in the first week, there wasn't enough med nodes to reward crew that they couldn't do it. They literally had to miss a star because people who were touching this feature for the first time, the fact that they put the Borg Queen in there to encourage more people to play it, actually couldn't complete it because there wasn't enough med nodes and people hadn't touched it before. I was, I was a bit like, oh, just hoard. But then I thought, I just I stepped back and went, oh, actually, no, people probably haven't touched this. This is the first time they're looking at it. And that was kind of a misnomer, really, or a bit of a mistake. And imagine if anybody at this game studio actually had a brain cell to use and thought for two seconds and said, hey... We're going to put out a mail to our captains and say, hey, whether you like continuing missions or not, next week there's going to be a change in the rewards, and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be the best crew in the game. It's going to be something special, killer artwork. You're going to love it. Start playing continuum missions now. Save up your stuff. You're going to need it. You're going to have to complete all the difficulties all the way. We're going to run it for four weeks. You're, it's going to be like an objective event. Just be prepared. If they had thought to warn everybody one week in advance would have circumvented everything. That's all it took. I think the theme of this episode is going to be communication, <clears throat> which does grease the wheels so they stop squeaking. Uh, you know, personally, I'm not too fussed about this. I happen to have enough uh, cubits that it doesn't affect me. I'd probably be a little more vocal if it did. But I do find the timing of this very hilarious. So for the last few weeks, people have been having issues with not enough med qubits and they've voiced their their considerations there ben went on stream on, on one of the dev updates and said we're looking to quote adjust players wallets to <laughs> to work on this and we've heard before that they stopped fleet boss battle uh development because it didn't it, it didn't hit the marks they were looking for so personally, I think well actually a little bit more of the timing so we we got the complaints we got the adjust players wallets and then they released this this hot new crew, very good 
metrics. If you're if you're stats geek, a strong crew to have with great art and came from a new series. I think they kind of hit hit on all cylinders for that. But then shortly after that, this patch drops, and and not only do they nerf things when people are asking for a buff, it happens to be the first patch after the new feature, which you know is kind of a tone setter. And I've said in other spaces. I've seen a lot of other games handle this better. They they release things under power and then buff upwards. No one likes having their stuff nerfed. No one likes having things, if you retrieved Bajorans to use that special orb equipment, now it's slightly worse. And is it a deal breaker? No, but again, it's that death by a thousand cuts is if you would have communicated better instead of saying adjust players' wallets, which, you know, it's nice to have a, a glimpse into what their thought process is. I think it would have been received better. So it's not a massive adjustment, but again, it's something they needed to communicate better and say, we hear you about the med equipment. Uh, we're trying to balance things, you know, for the company uh, and hopefully we'll settle on something that's equitable for everyone. And they didn't really do that. Speaking of the hot new crew uh, to come with the um, continuing missions in the last five weeks, shall we talk about what you could have won? What you could have won if only... You just thought up and conjured up some um, some incredible crew. And whilst I find this crew, I do have a question for you. Hang on, let me find... Sorry, we've got a lot of crew to go through. Uh, we, prob we probably won't go through all of these. Here we go. So, uh, I have a question for all three of you. Uh, what was your favourite H.R. Geiger-inspired film and why was it Alien? Hold on, are we getting Gorn in the game? Is that where this is going? <laughs> Gorn. No, I just think uh, you you be cute. She looks you be cute, and I love that kind of shorthand for it. Um, was very very Geiger esque, very sort of original aliens. And uh, shame she was a bit of a disappointing villain. But this card's very good. I don't want to talk about this card, but I'm sure you guys are just raring to. Uh, if Wait, you've already so discussed you her, you spent the... two thousand dilithium to get her, but you don't want to talk about her. I just did it just because I was sitting there in the middle of a meeting and I had nothing better to do but um, <laughs> so please uh, I'm sure you've already discussed it on the amazing big book pod but we have visuals here on the screen that people can adjust their ocular implants to so tell us why does she deserve to be a voyage rank 2 tier 1 nay say one of the best crew in the game well she's a strong voyager she's got a common skill set but she's got the traits for it. She's got the power for it. Blending into our previous power. topic, Sorry. if you take her through continuum missions and unlock mm -hmm. all four of her equipment slots, yeah, right now Frank Hollander is like the bee's knees for command. Guess who's number two? Her. Uh, so she will be your command person for the remainder of this feature probably. Uh, she's usable in uh, fleet boss battles if you or arena if you don't have if you are brand new to the game you just started four weeks ago she's going to be great for you otherwise you've probably got 18 different crew that do it but she's just a utilitarian in, in every sense of the, the game the art's fantastic it is a farewell visually in the show to the head villain that's been a villain for nearly 30 years of the show that we all love and it was a, a fantastic goodbye and they did the card right and Star Trek will absolutely oh, never never ever bring her back no there's no way possible in another 10 years Paul um, oh, oh, folks. Um, <laughs> yeah I, for, for anybody that, that may have a little fear missing out to you so I see some, some notes in chat do we only get 4 to 5 yep that's correct We some people got a 5th idol is one of them um, and That's for the rest of us it. too, who who are stingy on sites, I mean, Sorry. don't be. Just honor sales coming up. Go ahead, spend your honor, put a site on her. She'll she'll do wonders for you. But uh, but also she'll enter the portal too. That's another thing that that uh, the tilting point people have told us that uh, these these limited time crew uh, will eventually be offered uh, in the portal. So it may take a while. Uh, by that time, she'll have dropped a little bit, but not enough that she still won't be. Uh, be worth retrieving when the time comes, even if you missed out on her completely. Um, yeah, I, I, everything Frank said is is right on the money. This is just a fantastic crew, and and she'll she'll lead your your voyages, your shuttle work, um, and your continuum mission runs for a long time to come. The Borg Queen is everywhere, making her cruelest assimilation yet. The youth of the Federation and the son of Locutus. Yeah, this was a fine this choice. A <laughs> it was pr probably even a good choice. The people able to earn her are, are already veteran endgame players, so you don't need to worry about super uh, new player-friendly kind of things. 
So they went right with it, uh, top voice score, top three command bass, and I think that's what the majority of people are looking for is that just kind of bass and voyage metrics to, to keep pumping up their roster. Uh, the art is great. Um, I actually didn't like that part of Picard, but that's no. that's just a minor thing. I think it was a good choice, and I think most of our poll respondents agree. So um, I am curious, what do you guys think? because uh, we did not get back-to-back -back crew now. It seems that they're not going to run these continuously. Uh, are they going to flip-flop between dilithium? Is this going to be like a, a uh, once-a-season well, thing, like the gauntlet change? Or how often do you think we're going to get these? Crew? Very possibly. I think this is definitely a test. This is a test to see who could do it, and they're going to be collating feedback from how many people got her and how many people talked about it and what the kind of overall impression was. I suspect they will probably do this again, um, and I think it will be sporadic every once in a while because essentially it is another give. Well, for those that can complete epic, which if you you know put on the right crew, you should be able to do it. Um, yeah, I, I think this will be. Oh, very good, Overtired. He says you should be able to do it continuously. Very well done. <laughs> Wait, but this is Borg Queen. It's not a Q. What? It's in Q Q continue missions. Q missions. Okay, for podcast listeners, <laughs> uh, on, was Ubiquitous Borg Queen a good first choice for continuing missions? 80% love it. 20% think it's I just okay. No it. one thinks it's a bad choice. So there you go. Well, yeah. I mean, will it be like... Um, will it be like uh, premium Uber campaigns? Will they release like a stunning card, like a couple of, couple of really good useful cards first off, and then just to be like a, uh, a wave of just like, yeah, give us some money. Come on. <laughs> you know you want this card now. Will it? Won't it? Who knows? All I have to say is... What the f... <laughs> okay, let's move on to... That was the random one, sorry. <laughs> let's go back down... Do you remember life before Stream Deck? What nope. What was that like? I... <laughs> it's just perfectly... Shut up, Otto, you moron. <laughs> okay. That's out of line. Uh, totally in line. Let's talk about the new Mega. There's a Mega... <laughs> There's a Mega happening right now. Uh, or will be very soon, where you... Oh, no, Auto's gone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I finally... <laughs> finally got him off the stream. Um, new Mega Crew announcement we have concerning Flight Janeway, who you'll be able to, yes, get four out of five stars for just by getting to uh, 22, 25,000 in the event. Easily doable for anyone that's been playing for more than about two weeks. End side dip, nice skill set. Looking up at basically, well, she's looking up at Frank uh, saying, what are you going to say about me now? Um, <laughs> go on. Is this a card? Is this going to go in the plethora of Janeways we have, or will it re merely be another lost crew stranded in the Delta Quadrant of crew we don't give a fuck about? Yes and yes. There's a lot. There was a time period in this game where we were getting so many Janeways in a very short period that the joke was the next card will be Janeway from Discovery and Photoshops of Janeway in a Discovery uniform, all that. And at the time, DB took that to heart and said, oh, we're giving you too many Janeways, we're sorry. And we didn't see another Janeway for like two years. Uh, and there are a lot of Janeway cards in the game. Arguably, this is the best. Eh. Um, she gets a lot of events from her traits. Uh, she fills enough collections, especially now with the new Voyager collection that we'll talk about. It's a different skill set. So for any player of any experience level be you new or aged and decrepit uh elderly if you will uh she's viable she's she's not the best engineering crew you'll get and she doesn't yet have special equipment to make her even better than the binars but she's fine <laughs> just i'm just watching In the you, holodeck like, slowly just in the holodeck, Janeway and Da Vinci hide from their pursuers in the wilderness, where they manage to fly on the great bird. I don't know what you guys have said. I love this mega crew. It's not command dip something, which yes, we had literally like six in a row a year or two ago. It was disgusting. So, yeah. you know, for gameplay purposes, Eng primary, great. Five collections, great. Janeway will get events, even though it's not 2017 anymore. I'm happy to throw through a last side on this crew. This is a good crew for new players who are often at the mercy of whatever giveaway crew uh, they're going to lob at us. So I have no reservations about this one. You you pretty much just said the exact same that Frank said, but more okay. enthusiastically. 
yeah, yeah. Sorry. So it's nice that we didn't have a uh, command upset crew, and I think no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, so I'll, 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 I'll compare though. We were gushing over Sydney LaForge, who was a giveaway crew a few months back, and and how she led off with a, a nice eng primary, and now here's a crew that's got uh, you know a, a top fifty uh, voyage score, uh, so just even more to offer. Um, she doesn't have a whole lot of upside later on for her collections, but she's maxed out right now. She's got five collections right out the door. I mean, you know, what more could you ask? You drop the site, go ahead. And, and, and so the only question is, is whether you do it now so you can ride her benefit through the two Galaxy and Faction events we get coming up, or if you wait until the end and, and see if you can pick up a lucky star from the Mega Recap Packs. So is anybody into recaps yet? Uh, and we'll talk about some of the other crew from this Mega as we get into the episode a bit, but um, are we citing early or waiting? I'll wait. I mean, to be fair, with a lot of the crews that hit in the mid sort of sixties, I've kind of just sort of like just set them at four or five and just gone, it's fine. I mean, I can, I, I mean, the, you know, I'm of that decrepit, elderly, mummified player base that I've got crews that can just hit twelve hour voyages, and I'm not going to shoot for fourteen to sixteen to eighteen, oh, bloody nah, ten to twelve uh, on the regular, um, where I'm not going <clears> to. <throat> Thanks to datacore.app, I should mention that, for their amazing voyage calculator, um, taking the brain load off of me so I don't have to actually think about trait matches or who are actually good crew. Um, but no, this is just going to be another crew. I'll just sit there, and if I get the fifth star and she's useful, it's fine, but I've, I've already got a good roster, and I think a lot of player have, players, have, players, have, players, have, players have. All right, I'm looking at the mega list. Seska and Kulla, which were, I guess, fine, but kind of mid-level... Big Book has them tier 5 for whatever that's worth to you. Motura, who is arguably worse than the 4- and 8-year-old other Vidian golds in the game. Twin Mistresses of Evil, awesome art, but Command Ipsec. I don't think anyone needs more of those. And then Wixaban, who I barred us from talking about. He was on the show notes. I'm like, we're not going to cover this crew. I removed him. So recaps for me are a no. I'll just go ahead and cite. Um, and I don't know. Are precaps officially dead? Have they mentioned yeah, they anything killed that about that? Early. No one liked precaps. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe if maybe at three hundred and ninety dollars, the people would have liked I, them a little better I than think full what price. What they found with precaps is everyone just pulled all the precaps and didn't bother with the events. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much <laughs> happened there. Uh, okay. Well, let's continue on the Voyager theme and scroll through the wheel of crew until we. You sh I should have put these in order. I really should have. But hey, professionalism. Let's go for. Twin Mistresses of Evil, the Delaney Sisters, and another addition to the Bride of Chaotica Chi Collection. Uh, Dipset Command, Snore, but Voyage Rank 26. Do you know, do you just want these for the art? Like, you do. A pair you? of yeah. villainesses from the Captain Proton Hollow program, played skillfully by twin crew members, emphasis real crew members, Jenny and Megan Delaney. Wait, what? See, so here's, here's the problem, because we're going to nitpick because we can. <laughs> no this art, <laughs> this this art from the episode is actually them standing in the hallway, about to go on the holodeck, talking to Tom That's Paris. They are real life in the flesh, people in color. They just took that, said black and white filter, click click. Oh nope nope sorry yep holograms. Thank you. Drag and here you yeah, go. Yeah, that got me. The, Why are they holograms? Oh. Well. They're fantastic art, though. Mm. Like, I, I love this art. I love Seska and Kala's uh, weird, uh, in a hotel room, cut couple Seska, chair and art. Uh, they and... look at you from across the bar. What are you going to do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, folks, let's go have a, a beverage. Um, yeah, it, like, the, the Janeway probably is the best gold out of this mega uh this may be a close second boy this is uh, not a race anybody should run uh, <laughs> yeah it's it's set command dip i mean yeah well look I'll stay, so there's more to the game than the stats and we've lamented wait, in every wait, possible what? space we've lamented in every possible space about bad skill sets <laughs> so right we all get that at some point, though, if your roster doesn't need those skill sets, what are you playing for? I talked about recently on, on, on the Big Book Podcast, I'm playing for the art, actually. And we have Harry Mud coming out. We have Twin Mistresses of Evil. If you're still playing for stats, you know, then I, I'm i not going to say you're playing the game wrong, but it's <laughs> I like... I pity you. 
<laughs> Trust me, when you get, I've seen worlds you can't even imagine, and they include command of seg voyages for for years. No, this this is a fun crew for me, and they could have been Voyage Rank five hundred. I wouldn't care. <laughs> I There's feel, really no difference. I feel they're, like you've they're hit, great art. You, you've hit that chart, you know that Mimi chart where it starts like down there. Well, it's like playing crew oh. for stats. You know, I don't play crew for stats. I do play crew. Oh no, the other way around. Like I don't play crew for stats. Play crew for stats, and then no, I don't play crew yeah, for stats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're now this skirmish was. This skirmish was very hard fought. People uh, people gave feedback at every uh, every threshold of rewards that that just earning the extra copy or even a copy of her was was very difficult or even impossible. Um, and some some of the game performance affected that too. But uh, but really, it's just a lot of players getting excited over this card. And I, I have to agree that it's just it's just the theme and the flavor of the card that's mm -hmm. really driving that here. Um, you know, there's 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 some voyage power here, but that's not enough to get people out of bed and staying up all night hitting the skirmish buttons. Um, you know, it's it's all about uh, just getting getting that getting that bridge crew set up so you have even more people stuffed on your bridge. You can, or or you know, you can if you're doing your bride of chaotica theme. You know, there's a lot to to love about this. Or you just need to be um, hit I, by the horny stick. Like it, it's it, you, that's going to be counted in there. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you oh, the way, <laughs> Idol, do you still have the image uh, uh, saved as uh, twinsbasil.jpg? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Twins Basil. Twins Basil. <laughs> all right. How about uh, moving on before this gets totally sidetracked into everyone's depraved addictions? Uh, let's talk about the new collection that's come out. There is a whopper of a collection, and I'm going to quote uh, WRG's very own Ben saying, yeah, we're probably not going to do show collections anymore. And lo and behold, we have a show collection doing of, of Star Trek Voyager, which is just hit with a threshold of 220. The theme of the episode, communication is key. I'll just bring that back around. Yeah, exactly. Um, this one is a little bit different. Usually they are stats loaded. You know, original thinking is also an equally large collection that has stats pretty much all the way. This one has one in three tiers has a, a stat reward boost, um, including the very last one, which is 220, as I mentioned previously. Uh, how do we find this collection? Do you find it a bit wieldy? Have you acquired enough Voyager crew over time that you are just racing through those tiers and thinking, maybe I should put a sight on one. Here's Borg, here's Voyager. Maybe that'll help me get nowhere on either of those collections. How are you feeling about that? I love I love Sorry. this collection because it gives me a bonus I wasn't expecting. So when we invest in crew and we you know get them maxed out or we we have the plan to we're looking at the future of where their traits are going to bring them, and and here we get something out of left field. So really any crew whether he has eight eight traits or two um, has the possibility of making it as some of these show collections. So um, you know I understand that that one in three uh, thresholds only having a, a reward uh, is is a little bit lean, but some of those awards are great, you know. Under underrepresented among skill boosts is is med, and we've got I think two different med skill boosts. One being both proficiencies and base among here, uh, and both of them really reachable. So, yeah, for my account, uh, really really a great windfall that I wasn't expecting. Pull up and chat, folks. Keep voting on why you play this game. One reason I play the game is the collection aspect, and I think they realize that, and that's why they swerved away from it being tactical. Blah blah blah. To yeah, just collect the cards. Um. <laughs> And so I'm always happy to see a new collection, but they're... Okay, whatever. I know why they're going this route. I don't think they should. They're cutting back on skill boosts. They want to try to curb power creep. They should be leaning into it. When I see skill boosts, I think, gotta get this crew mortalized. And what they should be doing is raising the top end of shuttles. Make it possible... You know, right now it's capped at 99%. A lot of those board veterans get there pretty easily. Make the stat requirements a little bit higher. Maybe make, instead of nerfing continuum missions, maybe make the top end a little higher, and then we feel like we're, 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 we're fighting, struggling to reach that goal instead of being kind of tamped back down. So, you know, it's not a game breaker. You're still getting some stat boosts. I wish they would have gone with buffing the content instead of nerfing uh, uh, the player power. Mm. I, um, I ended up with, I think I got up to uh, just under 200, I think. Um, what was I over? I can't remember. Anyway, um, so I ended up getting about 10, 10 premium pulls from that. So 10 10x packs, and I got myself a lovely extra star for Joachim for my troubles. Um, so it was all worth it in the end. <laughs> We're still, you can see how they're starting to move away from those sort of blind pulls because, you know, obviously laws are starting to look like, oh, we don't like 
gambling all of a sudden and like yeah this is kind of skirting around that kind of uh gambling and addiction. i think they're in not. trouble if they start banning loot boxes so. <clears throat> well this is the thing this is this is the question i think that's why they're starting to look towards more about retrieval they're looking more about uh continue mission rewards and better ways to reward the players but still make money so i feel like they're maybe flailing a bit with that <clears throat> By the way, a, a few great crew have just gotten their first collection. Among them, I'm seeing here, one, two different Ch Ch Chakotes, Dreamwalker Chakotay with its first collection. Congratulations. <laughs> That'll fix them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I never mentioned this. I think one of the reasons, like, I think you just basically had a rage quit one day. It was basically like, hey, Auto, they've, they've released another Chakotay. <laughs> Dude, he's the O'Brien of real life. He must suffer in order for this Literally. game to continue. I don't think, like, even like even the one card that was statistically good, Timeless Chakotay, wasn't, isn't really a Chakotay, is he? Can you see But you don't know if he's Chakotay. I don't know if he's Chakotay. He's a Stay Puft Marshmallow. Man. Could be anyone. Yes. Holder, yes. For Puff <laughs> Yes, listeners, why do you still play? 64% are honest. They say addiction. 18% say <laughs> they like the stats. And 9% say uh, arts. 9% say friends. So there you go. Friends is one of the things. I think if it wasn't for uh, everyone else I've been talking to, um, you know, I, I started out getting into a good fleet and then I started out getting, you know, in, introduced to you, Auto, and things like that. If it wasn't for that, I'd have just been like, I'm going to put this dumb phone game down. Um, so I would I would have voted in the poll, but there was no option for I uninstalled the game. <laughs> Again. Anyway. First to Max, Frank. Okay. okay. I, I, that, what? First to Masaka. Uh, speaking of, uh, we do Ooh. have. How can you tell like... there is a new. Uh, the, how can you tell there's an honor sale coming? This isn't a joke. Uh, it happens yeah. every time with regularity. It's when they release a new Honor Hall crew. And yes, there is another one in. It is Data as Masaka. Auto, hit us with that flavor. After happening upon a comment, Data begins taking on the personality of an entity calling itself Masaka. I remember Otto, I, th I thought, I th uh, sorry, Idol, I thought when you introduced you, you said, how do we know that there's going to be a new Honor Hall crew? And the answer would be, he shows up in Dabo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for uh, those that don't realize, yes, Data's Masaka has actually shown up on some people's Dabo, so I don't think he has had that excluding tag on there. Yeah, that was uh, another another little... Little, little notch on the uh, TP error. Uh, Read about it at tperror.com. <laughs> TPG error. I'm sorry. Or, hey, how about uh, here's a free one. Did TPG screw up today.com? That's another one. I've got 12. Don't worry. I'm not running out <laughs> anytime if you, soon. If you just hit TPG and some disparaging words, you'll you'll probably I, get I, there. Trust um, me. I'm, I'm, I'm not in their Discord, but I've been banned from it preemptively. Oh, did you? No, but I will be. Oh, okay. I'll work on that tomorrow. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, that's All right, I, I want to read out a comment from chat from our good buddy Shyporn just to scream into the ether. He's he's busy collecting his Academy Awards. That's why he doesn't have mm -hmm. event time. Just to scream into the ether, I spent four plus hours. Hi, sweetheart. Four plus hours grinding at the skirmish event this past weekend. Finished outside rank two thousand. The reward structure needs to relax to allow for more casual gamers to annoy, to enjoy new crew cards. Uh, we actually we we're just talking about that a lot today. With the big book, who do who do we cater to? Who do we try to give advice to? And we talked about event ranks, and it is hard to get that, even if you are a regular weekly player. Um, There's also an, an interesting comment from Ben recently, who I guess we can talk about this here. He said, um, we're looking at ways to reduce the event crunch, I think he said, something along those lines. And they've done that once with skirmishes with the, the, the 3x speed up. It seems like they're keen to do that again, maybe a 10x warp or something like that for, for crafting Galaxy, for running Skirmish. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Is that, is that needed? Is that over-needed? Uh, and how do you think they're going to approach that? If they're looking to adjust our wallets, making it easier for us to spend <laughs> is one way to do it. Um, you know, if, if they accelerate things uh, in the same way that there's a 3x on Skirmish, um, it'll just make it easier for us to spend chronotons or spend a lithium or whatever else we're going through. So, you know, I'm hoping for more of a quality of life increase if they can have us maybe, uh, so we have, we get to save our skirmish loadout in between battles, which is a huge time saver. And so if they could do the same for, uh, for galaxy, for instance, where we could choose which boosts we want to have preloaded or choose which crew, uh, maybe even just automatically slot the mathematically topmost crew so that we don't have to click on it. And then we can have the option to change it if we want. Um, it really cut down on, on the fussiness. Again, it would increase the speed, though. So for the people that dedicate a certain amount of hours to their event each week, 
um, you know, there's, they're just going to be able to get more done, which means more need for pre-farming and more need for, for planning. I, th I think, um, well, you know, Shah, Shah addresses the fact he couldn't make 2000. I think, you know, it, 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 that is systemic with the new change. You know, what's well, a new change? It's been a few years now, but, you know, change for like, you know, we can run it at 3x speed. We can run about, you know, in 10 minutes, run about 40 odd skirmish miss missions. And, you know, that is, is in, it becomes more, more of a crunch on how you spend your time previously. Everyone was a bit more mm -hmm. of an even keel. Like, you know, if, if you play casually, you are playing, you know, at a more even pace with the people who are, you know, smashing that to get ranks. Now with the 3X, if you haven't got the time to put in, you know, even four hours, it's hard. And especially this skirmish was, was a pretty competitive one. I think any kind of speed up is only going to increase the competitive speed and make it harder for casual players to get into that arena. Um, well... Right. I think, though, that chronotons have to be considered. A lot too. of players can't spend them as fast as they make them. No. I think if you increase, it just as a thought experiment if, experiment, if you increase the requirements tenfold, suddenly you are able to burn through those, and you have to pick and choose. You, if you can't compete every week, you're going to see a, a bigger churn of, okay, maybe these thousand players get this gold, and then this other thousand players will get next week's reward because they don't have the... You might have to save up in between weeks... Uh, you know, to try to get the gold. So to an, to an extent, yeah, it's just kind of speeding up resources spent. Mm -hmm. But once you hit that that break point, the equilibrium where you can't afford to go every week, then maybe you have to start picking and choosing and strategizing, and that may open things up. Yeah. Oh, Shai says expand reward ranks. They have done that before. Like, they, they put it down to... I think they had a, there was a mistake one week, so they said, oh, okay, we'll put it to 2,500, and we'll do that. I think a lot of people kind of liked that as a as a more option. It gave casual pe casual players... Uh, something easy they could hit but I feel like on the other side there is the monetization angle and I know uh, I know Shah you are a VIP zero player and again I'm not excusing TAP for this, it's, cap it's pure capitalism but they want to kind of go like <laughs> buy packs, you want the crew? Buy the packs, spend the dilithium and that's like I, I feel like that's the crux of that argument and the, ba the battle between be us being players of a game who want to enjoy the game and then the company kind of going yeah but we want to make money and i feel like that's always going to be an equation when these discussions are had and and shout out or, or preemptive warning i guess to all the star trek legends players all 17 of you uh oh, wait, if you if you if you think this future is not coming for you oh boy let me tell you what's coming right around your bend is you want more than your existing 95 crew that you've got you want to go on their discord and give you 40 suggestions for crew you think should be in the game, they'll probably give you, I don't know, 20, but they'll be in DLC packs and they'll probably be 20 bucks a pack because the game's 20 bucks and yeah. not a lot of people have bought the game, spoiler alert, and I'm not trying to shit on the company, but, you know, that's where they've put all their resources and all their priorities for the last however many months that's caused everything else to go downhill. Uh, your game's going to get monetized the shit out of it. Uh, uh, to make up for what they're losing everywhere else. In, in Prompt 2 Legends, uh, fact, there are 64 people playing it right now. 60. Wow. Um, anyway, uh, not to go too far out of it. Yes, data is Masaka. Uh, would you like to stick a Masaka in your collection <laughs> what we were of talking curried about? crew? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in this collection of your curried crew. Um, By the way, you're getting an inkling why we're cutting this off at Timeline Stocks 100. <laughs> Do you guys like the Twilight Zone? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's really good. You should go check the videos we've been recording about it. <laughs> Only on YouTube. All right, go, go ahead, Dan. T talk talk to me about yeah. Data as Muscle. Yeah, well, we just kind of talked about it. An, an Engip crew, uh, you know, the, we have uh, one that we're getting four stars off for free that is uh, even stronger than this card. So if you are earning all your stars on Concerning Flight Janeway, uh, <laughs> why would you spend 100,000 honor on Data as Masaka? And, and that's even sides. before you've got to spend the additional <laughs> honor or citations that you need to to bring uh, bring them, I'll say, up to max. Name um, and the more... answer is you shouldn't. You Name shouldn't. a more iconic duo on a whole crew and being slightly disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be that way. They should, should be fantastic. Not. So I think we learned with <laughs> when crew number 1000 came out, <laughs> which they came on, on this, this stream even and said, we played 20 questions and they said, it's going to be a Mayweather <laughs> to thunderous silence. But then after that, it was actually just Jen Sisko, who's <laughs> one of the worst actresses in Trek history, but never mind. And so he kind of admitted then, well, this is, we have a list of crew. We have a whiteboard. This is who's coming up. And we kind of just try to slot them in there. 
So Data as Masak is actually nothing special from a character perspective. It was a fine episode. It was a fun episode. So from that point of view, the characters that we get are just kind of slotted in there. Like Nanoprobe Phlox, fine people like Phlox, but that was not a seminal moment in his history. The issue is that from the stat side of things, which what was at 18% of our respondents do play the game for, so let's let's talk about them for a second. They just put an event crew and stuck it behind a 100,000 honor paywall. And like you said, Dan, why go for that when you're going to release consecutively another eng crew that we're getting for free? Who's better? So, uh, you know, the timing, of course, is always suspicious. Does that mean we're getting an honor sale? If they're hoping to drain the coffers ahead of a sale, why, why do this? Why not put a good crew in there? Like, is it going to kill you to have us pay extra for a good crew? I just, I, I've never understood their 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 thought process there. So, so to answer the question of why do this, Idol, I'm assuming that you own data as Masaka already, right? I don't yet. <laughs> no. So, yeah, uh, for those unaware, uh, I have actually collected all the Honor Hall crew. I made a point of it, uh, I think it was about six months ago. Uh, well, back in October. October to January, I saved up enough Honor to buy all the Honor Hall crew that I was missing. So I have them all apart from Masaka. I am actually going to wait till the Honor sale so I can actually enjoy it this time because I had to skip the last one. And then I'll get Masaka. So, yeah, I have been collecting them purely for something to do. <laughs> How did you get that much honor in that little time? Oh, I just you, you know, I just phoned up my good mate Ben and just said, Oi, you know, hook us up, hook us up. No, I just I just I'm in a good fleet that, that just rotates hard and I love honor. I'm Thank, the man. You yes. oh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Klingons never do anything small, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Yay, random triggers. Uh oh, I shy like that. I treat honor hall as museum storage. That's very good. That's very good. Yeah, a lot of people don't. There are no good crew. Well, there are not many good crew in there. I'd, Captain Tribble is pretty useful to continue missions. Kaless kind of is starting to show his age with Gordon at the moment, but occasionally useful. Um, well, hold on, though. But a fact that, what, a 2017 crew is still occasionally useful when the new ones are not? Yeah, I think that exactly. says a lot about you. Yeah. All right, thought experiment. What would you guys, what would get you to instantly drop 100,000 honor? Is it a particular character? Is it gauntlet help? Is it ship damage? Like, what are you looking for personally in the honor hall? I would say specific characters, like for me, not everybody, screw everybody else. This is just for me. Um, it is just one of those iconic characters that I'm Harry nostalgic. Mudd. I'm Yes. Mudd. Something <laughs> I'm nostalgic for. Imagine if Harry Mudd was in the honor hall. People would Hey, Roger Carmel's estate has said no for 35 years to anything. His mother was pissed at him when he died, and she held this over his head till after her death. And then finally somebody in the family was able to take over and release it. And now you're going to start to see him in places you never have before. It's about time. We'll cover it later. Imagine if he was... Imagine if the ubiquitous Borg Queen was in the honor hall. Yeah. Instant buy. Imagine if Mira Tuvok was in the honor hall. Instead, you get, you know nanoprobe Phlox who is outgunned completely by Data who is outgunned completely by Janeway I mean you could what, say what's the point players, it's a museum you could say to new players like hey with your first honor okay buy trainers because that's generally a good show early on because you're going to be you're going to be uh, uh, bottlenecked on them and then once you've got your first 100,000 yeah get this crew because that's a good use of honor like but instead it's just like now wait for the honor sale and you'll get something you might use <laughs> Uh, Walt Canning chat says Giant Spock. Oh, so we've got Giant Spock. Yeah. We've got Harry Mudd. Is is this, should it be reserved for iconic characters? It should be is that more important characters. Than stats? I think, I don't think Data is Masaka or I Can't See Your Face Chakotay really count as unique. Kalos is probably a good one in there. Captain Tribble yeah, as well. I think Kalos And yeah, fits. those two are kind of fit the, the, the mold. But the rest, like Nanopro Flocks, great card. Like Ball Queen 7, terrible art. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So my my take is since since the honor hall is is evergreen, um, leave leave it to offering unique either best in slot or close to uh, cards that serve a very specific functionality. And so they've taken that direction a few times. We have Captain Tribble in there. Uh, shout out to Evans of Wales who who has just recently purchased some great purchase for your continuum missions and your shuttles. Um, does something that no other card does. Just focuses solely on command and gets it to a huge amount. 
Um, Power Creep, unfortunately, is going to eclipse it in some time, but in the meantime, we can enjoy him. Um, we have Technician Uhura, which kind of felt like a, a thud because we had so many other optimal fleet boss battle healers, but she is among them. And if you need one, she's right there for you. Um, Kalos, if you need to break into Gauntlet, he's still a fine option to get your first, uh, you know, really high proficiency rolls in, into the Gauntlet. Um, again, just for the cost of purchase. So if they le leaned into that, and continued to really release some very, uh, very specific, um, fine-tuned crew to help new players who are looking at their first hundred thousand honor and deciding whether they should just take some random bullets in the honor sale, or really get something that's going to do great things for them and really help them achieve and get to the next level of their of of being a, a timelines player, power player. Um, you know, I'd love to see more of that. It's just maybe that I think I would probably define less than a third of the crew that are currently on the on our hall as that, though. Most of them are just, you know, this is a fine Voyager. It does some collections, and I've already got that. Hold up in chat, folks. If, uh, if they added some uh, an honor hall collection with some stat boost, would that incentivize Ooh, you? That would piss people off, or, I think. Or would that feel like an obligation? Yeah, that, yeah that's not I feel that would annoy people because that's just like, oh, now I have to spend sites to complete. Because that's the only way you can, unless they glitch the honor hall again and release everyone. But um, yeah, that's the only way you can. You'd have to spend sites. And that, that feels like that is too much of a burden. That being said, I'd probably do it. Well, are normal collections a burden? I don't think so. Because you need 25, 20 to 25 fully fused crew to get before, to the next milestone. Before retrieval, yes. Now, no, because eventually you can slowly get through it. You can target crew. Like, they're releasing, ever since the Explorer collections come out, we've had about four four Explorers, like in just super rares. So I feel like collections are a little bit easier because even if you're a non-spending player who doesn't really rank in events and just goes to 130k, you can eventually fill those collections just with the, 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 the super rare crew over time. Like, look at original thinking and resourceful. They just throw that on everything. Like, I feel yep. it is easy enough to get yourself a good base of solid collections if you're in a top-tier star base as well that you, you can you can pretty much coast in the game. It's, it's No, I don't, I don't think so. So Well, and used so, to... Oh, sorry. Sorry, just to finish the point. Spending two hundred and eighty thousand, two hundred sixty thousand honor for one card is a burden, but yeah. three point two million for the twenty crew <laughs> you need for the next milestone is just like normal. What? They did the monster math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Frank. Please. Well, no. I mean, that's that's a perfectly way to wrap it up. I was just going to say that you know, used to up before a year ago. Uh, collections were very important because that was the only way to get ahead in the gauntlet is to get as many collections as you can to boost your stats to have a little bit of a leg up. Now with continuum missions, it doesn't matter. I can I can throw one piece of equipment on that undoes all of your collections instantly. So, And there you go. All right. Let's talk about something that WRG aren't really doing as much or have had problems with um is it communication there you go you got my segue see i haven't done this for long enough i can actually come up with some good segues um yeah we've well we spoke about this we've been touching over this uh, this subject over the last sort of like several points but so something new has happened something new has occurred tpg have actually started their own discord they actually have done it they took some advice they said we're going to start well okay i'm going to tweak that ever so slightly they didn't start their own discord they stole the legends one so there was already a discord available for star trek legends when it launched it's on terraforming. ios yeah, for, for when it launched on iOS about three years ago, or however long ago it was ago. Um, so they basically said, this is our Discord, we're just going to launch in there, and we're going to combine it with Legends and Timelines. So if you want to go look it up, there is actually an official TPG Discord, which I myself am a moderator, uh, so take that with a grain of <laughs> fail shit <Shill>. already. <laughs> um, Aid. I'm mostly in there just to see what happens, um, but it, it, it's fun. So, um, yeah, there is that. Um, so go look at that. However, we are going to keep addressing the fact that there was an Ask the Dev section over there, and we're going to be talking about the communication problems that have happened over there, including uh, the ticketing system they have over there and the forums in general. Gentlemen, where do you want to start with this monstrous topic? Because it is kind of a bit of a bear for the community. Frank, go on, you start. <laughs> this has kind of been your I bear. <laughs> I, I, I feel so bad. Uh, I mean, no, you know, no, when you, I was... Don't you fucking lie to me. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was told, try and, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, at least smile and and pretend to say something nice or do the compliment sandwich. 
So I'm going to try a compliment sandwich here. Um, no, it sucks. That's the end of it. And if it, was a, <laughs> if it was a meal, I would send it back to the kitchen. And while it was going back to the kitchen, I would get up and leave. So the waiter would have to bring it back to the table where I wasn't thinking I went to the restroom and leave the food there. Like, I, I just, I don't even have words. Don't pull any punches now, Frank. <laughs> no, keep so keep it. communication is key. That's the theme of all of this. That's what we've been talking. We could replay the first hour of the stream for this segment. Um, you've got previously, once the, the changeover happened f with WRG and TPG and everything, Nancy was our community manager, ran the forums. That was your point of contact for anything in the community. Nancy's running forums, Twitter, whatever. Okay. Now we have a Discord. And on the Discord side of things, you've got Polo. Okay. So Polo and Nancy, both in Barcelona, same area of the world, not the United States with the rest of the team. But when we had DB, Shan was in San Francisco. The rest of the team was in Boston. Kind of the same thing, not really. But uh, Polo and Nancy just don't even seem to talk because on the Discord and on the forums, wildly different information if it's ever updated. First of all, they open these Discord. It was already the Legends Discord that came in, eminent domain, took it over, kicked kicked the Native Americans out. The white man took over. The 64 and... players got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, That's at that point. The, the 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 trail of legends tears, and okay. they guys. Let's, <laughs> let's not start offending entire demographics of people. And they they <laughs> st they started up. It was a historical Dude, thing. By Were the you... way, if stars was here, there would be no difference in the discourse. So keep no. going, Frank. <laughs> Yeah, start with the Greek city type. Go on. <laughs> this is me on 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 three energy drinks. Um, so yeah, for those of you keeping track at home, we're fifty percent of the way through Frank's beverages now with him on his shaker cup. So <laughs> yes. we'll keep track for you. No, and no water. I am not filtering my kidneys out. My kidneys will fail before the end of the stream. So, <laughs> uh, basically, they open up this Discord and they say, "Okay, hey," and they barely even advertised it. And they said, "Okay, well, this is going to be where people come to us." The devs are in other discords, be you in the unofficial now timelines discord, be you in the Trek time discord or whatever, you will see Ben or Joe and then even Polo joined and they would hop on our stream or they would interact with the community. They do Q and A's, they do lots of stuff. You've seen over the last six or seven months, a little bit of a change because Ben started to do his own streams instead of appearing on this stream which was fine. It's It makes sense. You should probably do that. Have your own social media. No offense, gents. But, um, and it started to go from there to where it became all in-house. Now, they've stopped talking on all the other discords entirely, and they're only talking on theirs. Okay, Are that's they? fine. Oh, well, <laughs> so that's what I'm getting to. So they, they rebrand it before announcing it publicly, but they rebrand it, and word of mouth kind of passes around, hey, this is going to be the new official home they come in they open it up and i'm not lying to you valentine's day the 14th of february was the last time before this week that ben or joe said a word in that discord or any other discord they were gone for over a month from the community all the while problems in the game happened all the while legends launched and was a shit show I'm sorry, that game fucking sucks right now because it's a port of a mobile game to Steam with all sorts of problems. By the way, you can absolutely cheat your balls off. Like, so easy. Not even funny how easy it is. For $20 premium experience here. People go in there saying, hey, I can't do this. I can't claim my dailies. I can't do a PvP battle. I can't do an alliance battle. The game crashes. I can't see this. The GUI pops up. I don't know what to do. Welcome, Captain. Live long and prosper. File a ticket here in our Discord system, and the devs will get right back to you. Guess who the tickets go to to get sorted? They go to the unpaid mods, not the devs. Really? I didn't the know The devs that. sit somewhere else. Well, so, hold on. Is Idle answering my ticket right now? Is that what's going no, on? I'm actually not high enough a mod to get into the ticket system, so I'm kind of grateful okay. for that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's it's it, it's not great. Um, I'm kind of on the inside okay. looking out, uh, obviously. So I'm seeing a lot of the inside discussion, and it is it. Yeah, we, we you know we hear from Polo uh, once in a while, but they, they are looking to scrap the ticket system because um, it was kind of a holdover from Legends when they were actually using it for for tickets in the game when it was the iOS version. Um, hey, hold on, is this going to affect Timelines players in the Z- the Zendesk model that is set up I for normal ticketing? I have no idea. I think normal ticking is still the normal way of doing it. I don't think they're going to okay. do it. If you are a player who has a problem with timelines, do not use the Discord. Go and use the Zendesk ticketing. Like I think that's been a little bit uh, of a misnomer that that was going to come through. Um, so uh, the problem is, is yeah, I, I'm, I don't want, I don't want to speak too much to it because I don't know all, all of the future plans, but um, there are... I think the, the ticket system in there is going to go, but um the you know we've all we've all interacted with the cs team on the zendesk ticket system or even in the game just send an email like it's pretty good they are pretty probably one of the better cs teams out there customer support is actually the best thing about about yeah this game and this company because and it's been the same customer support team since 2016 but yeah exactly they're 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 great tickets in discord aren't great like it is a great system to use but in the it only works if the if the people that can answer the tickets are there the ticket the people that answer the tickets aren't there uh ben and joe are in the discord they talk a fair amount or do they talk sometimes in there when they're on discord but the people that manage like the problems with the game the cs support none of those are on that discord so there is zero point submitting a ticket unless you have keep a problem them off. with <laughs> keep them off the discord because right now that's that's the best functioning part and pretty much yeah but uh, that 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 Discord's pretty dead at the moment, so um, there's not a whole right, lot look, going on. My, my only big issue with this whole shebang is that they launched a game where they knew, and I can confirm they knew ahead of time, that there's this, this big uh, infinite money glitch, essentially. And so we did we did a, a first look, a playthrough, a review on this channel, uh, on the Trek Time channel, and I, I went in being a little pessimistic. I don't want another mobile game. I've already got one sucking my soul out of me. We were but I watched the gameplay, and yeah. I thought, you know, it's actually not bad. We didn't run into any major bugs. I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And then shortly after, I found out, oh, there is this glitch. So for them to launch it with that, and there are competitive it's... elements, it is about as... Is, it's it's not ethical. That I'm, being I'm, said, everything I'm... else... Sorry, don't go. <laughs> Look, just because you're a mod. No, uh, no, 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 no. I was actually going to clarify something. Crush the little people. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it's it's not so much a glitch. It's more like if you've ever used a trainer or any kind of uh, hex editing uh, systems. Yeah. Okay, an exploit. Let's call it. An exploit is good. Yeah. Right. So that's my only big issue with it. The rest of it falls under communication and death by a thousand cuts, which has been the theme of this episode. Why do you make your Discord public? Okay, the day before the 14th, they were talking on Discord. The day went public the 15th, they stopped talking on their own Discord for over three weeks. Like, why? Yeah. You have to start something. If this is your big launch, either put a face up there and say, hey, welcome to the Discord. We're going to do a stream. We're going to do this and that. They launched a giveaway and they didn't give anything away. (laughs) Frank stepped up and said, hey, they're like three days late on this giveaway. I'll pay pay it instead for you so you can enjoy the game. It's just, it boggles my mind. And then, well, whatever. I don't want to get too personal, but it's been a failure of communication at a point where they need more communication. Yeah. Let me rewind so. back to uh, when Legends first launched on, on the iOS Center and they launched this Discord. I remember being so impressed because I went in there and I was speaking to the community manager at the time, April Marie, an amazing personality who was all over that Discord, talking every day, talking to people, talking to me because I ended up I was like, hey, do you want to come on and chat about Legends on us? Never got anywhere because... Higher ups didn't want to do it at the time. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> no, let's get another one. It was. It was. It was good. It was refreshing. It was nice. Like I was, and I immediately just refreshing thought, like, like a nice cool glass of <laughs> of Samantha Oops, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um yeah so yeah it was refreshing because she was all over it. she was talking to people there was definitely like a huge like oh my god this is what a community manager should be with their community like you don't hire a community manager to ignore them or to just like kind of go around the edges she and apologize. was she was all over reddit too like yeah. she interacted with people if there was buddy like she talked she was personable she's fantastic and she's gone 
Well, she still works yeah, for oh TP, yeah. but she's not in that Discord anymore. <laughs> so um, it's such a bit of a shame. But um, yeah, I just, I just, I feel, uh, I feel I'm probably not going to be a mod tomorrow. But yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, um, we, Dan, we can you talk is. for the common man? Please, you've been, you've kind of kept your head down and you're playing the game. Has this affected you at all? I, I try to I try to engage with official forms of communication as little as possible, and this has been this has been a common thread through all of the various mobile games I've played, where there's a reputation that you find with the official forums, or in this case, official Discord. It's my first for an official Discord, um, where it's it's not uncommon for these things to be set and forget. Um, they tend to serve a function where if you have something that doesn't necessarily fall within the guideline of a ticket that needs to be handled because there was a defect or something that um, you needed to be made whole for, if it's just feedback, a comment, uh, maybe some some ranting, <clears throat> and you don't have an outlet like Timelines Talks to give your rant on, they may, be directing, they may be directing you to, to an official forum to uh, air your grievances. Um, and that tends to uh, degenerate and reduce the experience for the rest of us. Uh, I have found that the Star Trek Timelines official forums falls within that category, uh, and therefore I interact with it as little as possible. Um, this doesn't affect me because, you know what, I found uh, the Trick Time Discord, and I have a great time there, so a major plug to the mod team mm -hmm. there and uh, Captain Idol for hosting. Um, and so for those of you who are, who are looking I'm for some positive... I'm choking on chips. I'm, I'm, I believe what you say. <laughs> He's so choked up emotionally. He's just there. Yeah. I also want to highly recommend, uh, and, and Roy Kirk moderates a great Reddit over in uh, Star Trek Timelines subreddit. Yeah, um, uh, really, really, there are some fantastic outlets for those of you that want to engage on, on a positive level. Um, the, the, yeah, I, I take I take official anything with a grain of salt. Yeah. So the question is now: now we've got the Discord, which has now a few channels, and I will I will I will look at it now. Uh, called Engineering Room, and make it so. What happens to the forums? What are we doing here? Like, are they? What, what kind of things going to happen right now? If they don't nuke the thing, that thing from orbit, like it's it was. And I, I, I want to specify this. I don't have a bad thing to say about Polo or Nancy, for that matter. Yeah, Polo's great. Uh, because both of them came from another side of the business. They were not part of this team originally, and it was just kind of thrown on them individually at different times. Hey, you're now running this community. You're now responsible for this. And you've got to learn the game, the culture, the community really fast. And you're the number one target to the public as soon as you show up, that's a tough gig. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Um, and especially when you're having to do it for, like in Polo's case, multiple games right now and balance that, not fun. Uh, but communication's key. It's not Polo's fault that there's a complete breakdown in the communication chain. Uh, that said, when Shan was around, the forums were at least only halfway degenerate because she would freely go around and do what we call Shan snip where she would just edit your comment in blue. It would say snip and keep comments positive, Shan. That's it. You've been Shan snipped. That doesn't exist anymore. Nancy lets stuff go way off the rails because I think Nancy is a very smart individual who said, fuck it, I don't want to be around these toxic <laughs> assholes because there are some characters on the forums. But that's where a lot of people go to get their engagement. That's where a lot of people go to get their news because Sweet not everyone... Like it's where you it go was, to get tips. Yeah, yeah. It's not where every. Where you not can find the amazing plays, chronometrics. Not everyone would, who plays a mobile game <laughs> is so engaged as we are. So that's that's going to be kind of their first outlet to go Google and go. Oh well, hey, there's forums, and you need to maintain that. And if you're not going to maintain that, where they haven't really been properly maintained, kill them, kill them. <laughs> Just do a Discord. I, I will say, and I'll give I'll give a note uh, to to Shia Porn in chat here, who mentioned he prefers a web based forum, and and I, yeah. I do for some legacy communication. A lot of what I what I did to to kind of yeah, further my game was just reading all the the successes and mistakes that that other players had done in the past, and the forums are a great resource for that. This is um, you know yeah. every, every everything for seven years being written in black and white as people go through the ups and downs, seeing the mistakes that the developers made, the players have made. Um, so that I can avoid them was, was really valuable to me. And um, there was actually a changeover when Disruptor Beam uh, seeded the, the forums over to, 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 uh, to Wicked Realm. 
uh, where a lot of that communication was cut off. There's there's kind of a, a great uh, fog of war where we can't see back to the, the 2016 communications any longer. Even archive.org.org doesn't have a good uh, oh, really? a, a good the grasp on that. Machine. So so yeah, there's a whole bunch of yeah. The Wayback Machine doesn't okay. doesn't quite work for all the pages. Some some of them, but you only get like the first page. You can't click on and see further pages of discussion. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of research. <laughs> and so I, I do fear that if they do eventually cut off the forums, uh, the, the same thing is going to happen, that we'll just use the sum total of seven years worth of knowledge and successes and failures, and that's going to really be a big hit to the community. So if any of you have anything that you like on the forums, grab it now. Yeah. Um, I kind of agree, but there's also a lot of 2016-style advice that still gets bandied about that shouldn't yeah, exist, it... so... It's the best of both worlds, really. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people lamented Ubisoft for one of their games recently. Said they moved away from forums to an official Discord, and like, yeah, the people said the same kind of thing. It's like we like a forum because you can have a combined knowledge base that we can search. We or like, or at least a subreddit. Like that's why people like subreddits because you can easily search. You just Google whatever you want, and then put Reddit at the end, and you'll get a better answer than Google will give you. Um, but you know, it, it's the same kind of thing. A Discord, you're kind of reliant on there being some quite nice community members who might answer your question in a non-patronizing manner if you're lucky <laughs> you know at, at this point at, at this point whatever whatever streamlines their ability to actually respond to players is the route they should go because and this is not about me it kind of is but it's not they asked for help with feedback about a trade audit <clears throat> and so you know you know what the outcome is going to be on the forums they're going to argue for four pages about the meaning of a specific trait but there's a big thread in there that was pinned by an employee of WRG that they didn't even know existed. So if you don't know what's going on on your oh. own forums, then what's the point of having them? Oh, if oh. Discord is going to enable you to communicate better, then do so. Like, communicate better is, is what we're all asking for. So it doesn't matter to me what form. It could be forums. It could be Discord. They could s phone call each of the 10,000 players and let them know what event is coming up as long as they're communicating. So they need I to get, get a better. I get called from fucking bed at like three in the morning saying, "Hey, you ready for this event?" I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> hey, last dibs on this ubiquitous board queen before I yank it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. About that, I'm gonna, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but uh, yeah, talking about your thread, your trait audit, your very the amount of hard work, Auto, that you put on that trait audit is astronomic, and for them to turn around, no, and go, no. All right, hold on. All right, all right. Frank, Frank got his little rant. This is gonna be my little rant. Go for it. Can I add context? That trait? Can I add context for people that don't know? So for people that don't know, uh, WRG just came out with a post on the, on the forums and say, hey, we're thinking about doing a trait audit. Have you guys got any recommendations uh, about who, who should have what traits to which everyone just went, do you realize what auto's done? <laughs> so yeah, go on. All right. That thread hasn't been updated in about two years. And if you look at your roster, which crew are you using right now? Probably ones that you acquired in the last two years. There's some older ones that still do well, but they're mostly newer crew. And I stopped updating it because they, they didn't care. It's been like three and a half years since the last audit. They've given us their definition of the displaced trait, and that's it. There's like 80, 90 traits in the game. They won't tell us what any of the traits mean. They won't tell us. Uh, we did get in one of the dev communications. Joe said, we're looking to keep them to about eight traits. And I guess that's kind of reasonable. He said, we're doing that to open up design space. Well, that was a failure because they've already opened up design space. You could release in a 15 trait crew and get people to buy them like that because that's a lot of collections. They could release a three trait crew with a really strong stats. They've already opened the design space. They're not doing anything with it. I think No Name Namer will chime up in chat and agree with me that they're actually kind of making crew all the same. They all get seven or eight traits, and when you do that, no one can shine. That's that's a bit of an aside. So they don't give us trait definitions. Uh, they don't tell us which crew they're looking to target. Should we give more traits to Captain Scott, who's literally garbage right now, maybe the worst crew in the game? Do we want to buff him up with some more traits? You know, he says he wrote the book on engineering. Should he get the writer trait? Maybe. You know, they could they could be doing all these things and instead they leave it alone for four years, wait for the community to do the free work for them, and then stroll in and say, hey, what ideas do you have? So, you know, help me help you. If you gave 
us a little feedback on this is what we're looking to achieve with the trade audit. You have guys like in Discord, Andresen, uh, who loves loves the show and has all these these new crew who haven't entered the game. He knows all about trades. You have people willing to do free work for you. All you got to do is sit down for half an hour and say, this is what we're looking to do. Can you help us help you? And they haven't done it in years. And they continue to release crew that go against their, their last trade audit. They, they gave explanations. Like in 2019, they said, all right, we're going to add the human trait to all the holograms because they look like humans and that's our justification. And then they, like two months later, they released a, a little blue boy Wesley who was a hologram who looked like a human, didn't have the human trait. It's like, communicate. All right, I'm done. Communication. <laughs> let's, let's have more communication. <sighs> well, I need yeah. more Cerveza Crystal. Oh. When, when are those new four traits they promised showing up again? I have no fucking idea. What was it, like, vengeful, uh, playful, and something else? That, that was... was December, did they announce it? Yeah, it's been, well, three, well, four, three, four months now. Um, I assume that's, like... I, I know, I approve, like, adding new traits to the game. Displaced was a great thing, because I enjoyed, like, them adding traits to existing crew, adding a mega for it, and adding a collection for it. That was fun. Like, I enjoyed them doing that. So I'm all up for them saying, like, hey, let's add some more traits to the game, and we'll we'll put those applicably on the right crew. I just kind of don't trust them to do it properly, um, because, let's face it, we haven't heard from anyone. We don't know who decides what traits go on who, and we don't know if those people are Star Trek fans. That's the important point. And this is why also your trait audit thread is so vitally important because you've not only just gone, oh, I think this crew should have this trait. You have gone into in explicable detail as to why. And that's the important part of it. And like I could see them sort of going up against a few of them saying, well, gameplay wise, we don't want to give extra trait because it'll, you know, actually, if they thought that much about continuum nodes, I would care about that, but they probably don't. Um, so it's more like, there's yeah, a, they should There's know. a pushback with a lot yeah. of companies and, and, and Tilting Point, formerly WRG, is chief among them where they, they don't want to rely too much on players to dictate things in game. And I understand that for a lot of different reasons, that makes sense. But you also have a lot of willing, knowledgeable players who, for free, uh, you know, you just open your Discord, make one extra channel, pull a couple community members in who know their stuff, and they can help you. Because we've seen, I, I'm sure a lot of the people watching know that there's data, mine, data mining that goes on. Sometimes you get art or stats ahead of time. We have seen so many train wrecks coming ahead of time that could be easily avoided if they had still the players council say, hey, we see this is coming in the pipeline. Make sure you don't make that mistake and they do it anyway. So mm -hmm. they've been shooting themselves in the foot in that particular manner for so long. It's just become whatever. There's nothing you can say. And as a player of a, of a free to play game, I expect to be a resource in just my presence and pumping up those engagement numbers, uh, you know, as a, as a seldom, but sometimes pair of a mobile game paying into it. I expect to, you know, pay some payrolls and some, uh, some uh, equipment costs and server costs here and there. Mm. Um, but but here is a group of players that's saying we want to be a resource for you in a different way. We want to, uh, you know, fill in the Star Trek knowledge where yours may stop short. We want to fill in the, the knowledge of how we enjoy playing the game, something that and... they can only get through metrics, but then there's that cloud that they can't see through of what we're really thinking and feeling, you know, beyond what we let hang loose on the stream here. And uh, and yeah, they just they just refuse to to even listen to it. And part of that, I think, may be legal. And I won't speak to that too deeply because if you hear somebody's idea and then you know, it, well, it's in a it's in a way that that's formally set up, then there could be issues down the road. There's a difference um, between IP still, and like adding a trait. Like, and just adding a trait. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. Um, the, the the important part of that conversation is we're Star Trek fans. We are doing this for Star Trek. We know the crew. Like, we know because we've been obsessing over these episodes, not in two, on two fronts. One, we've been obsessing over these episodes for the God knows the last 60, 75 years or however, you know. Uh, and second of all, we're Star Trek fans, we're naturally nitpicky. Like, we, we, we go over these fine details. That's why we have technical manuals for ships that don't exist. Uh, and then people will still argue over that. You know, but we are the best people to talk about it. If you say, if they were to put in a discussion thread and say, okay, we're about to release assimilated Harry Mudd, right, what traits do you think you should have? You will have about 20 pages of discourse that may or may not end up with a, de a decision, but you will definitely get some ideas of the things you should have. 
and that is and here- invaluable for people who are willing to discuss this voluntarily because you have the fam you're not talking about some random uh, clash royale or uh you know it's, uh, what's the other popular bloody mobile game that's on every advert i can't forget anyway something that has no established law for the last 60 70 odd years you're talking about something that has an established fan base that has precedent and that is important raid shadow legends is what you're that's thinking of yet. which thank you i, I can't believe they haven't sponsored timeline stocks by the way <laughs> i know that anybody somebody <laughs> with, episodes, like, guys. You felt, you, you sponsored that. everybody everybody in the mobile gaming universe except for us oh no don't if tell me i I did have a sponsor. I did have a, a, an email from someone at Hawaii, Huawei, Huawei. I forget who it was who just said like, Huawei, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, it looked like bollocks, so I ignored it. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. If you if you sign up for a Twitch account today, I think you get a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship the next day. Mm-hmm. I think it's part of the welcome package. Hello Fresh as uh, well. We haven't been touched by yeah, Hello Fresh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Use our code at checkout. So uh, that's at tpgerror.com. So I'll, I'll put a bow on this and just kind of reiterate everything that my three esteemed co-hosts uh, have eloquently said. And if anybody from TPG actually ever listens to this, I'm sorry for my language. Not really. Um, here's Here's the key. I'm not telling you how to run your business because, as Shan once told us, we have no idea how to make a mobile game or to run any of that. But I mm-hmm. I do know a few things about business. I know in a business, if I bring on new team members in the middle of a project at any time, there's gotta be onboarding time and they are not gonna be experts about everything and there's a learning curve. The difference here is in the mobile game industry, you either have generic mobile games like Raid Shadow Legends or Ebony or Clash of Castles or whatever, and there's no lore and anybody can just come in and say, okay, fine. Or you have an established IP with 56 years of backstory in Star Trek. If this game was not Star Trek, this game would have died in 2016 because it's a shit game. But because it's Star Trek, you have nerds who latch onto it and keep going because they love Trek. They love the ideals of it. They love the message of it. They love everything about it. So when you do that, please make sure you don't have a stream for your community that you haven't talked to in three weeks that you say, we're going to do Trek Pictionary. You don't spell stuff right. And you introduce the new team member who says, I've never watched Star Trek. I'm really excited to start. By the way, I'm one of your project managers. Holy shit. That's when I uninstall the game because it's like, fuck, this may as well be Raid Shadow Legends. You don't know. Yeah. What's us, what's us. Captain Kirk's name? Ah, oh, I know it's Kirk. Mm, mm. And I'm not <laughs> oh, shitting God. Marin. Marin, lovely person, not shitting on Marin. I'm just using this as an example because it's prescient <laughs> right now. If you have people that are not aware of Trek, lean on your community a little bit to say, hey, while we're getting them up to speed, what can we do? What do you guys suggest? Because otherwise, you're going to have people that look at it and go, this is no longer worth my time or money. Here's my 900 well, episode primer. Get cracking. Well. <laughs> All right. We've done we've done what over an hour of this. Let's get <laughs> to the next topic because I actually really am looking forward to the next topic. Let's let's All right. Let's... Okay. Let yeah, we'll move on. I believe believe it or not this will probably be the last yeah, this is reason it's 99 100 episode 100 of Timeline Talks will be something completely different. Um the masses uh, demanded number ninety nine. They, the they seriously did. No, seriously, uh, it had to be. We, I cannot go from ninety eight to one hundred. It would irk me so much. I have to end on one hundred. It would be so fitting. <laughs> My God, what have I done? Okay, uh, let's. Oh, hang on. Let me press the right buttons. My God, Auto. What? No, my God, Frank. What have you done? Uh, let's. I don't know. Why are my buttons working? No, that's because I'm not. Hang on. Vintage timelines talks right here. By the way. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Let's try this. But these buttons. No, they're not. A cunning here. smuggler. He manages to evade justice time and time again, only to move on to his next criminal pursuit. Well, I can't bring his stats up on the screen. My buttons have stopped working. Uh, hang on, let me try and manually trigger this. Uh... It's still data as Masaka. That's what it, we're it is. I know. Hang on, let me go to another screen. Talk about mud while I try and fix this. I'm just happy that the data with Masaka uh, family finally gave way into letting him be put into mobile games. Uh, that estate has been picky for far too long. 
My hockey mud's just glorious. Died. <laughs> Sorry, if, carry if on. You, Talk about you, mud. I'll, uh, I'll I'll get there. If you haven't gone to the time portal and claimed mud already, that's because you're reading your in-game mail that said he wasn't available yet, despite the fact he was available long before, and then the OE started, despite the fact it wasn't yet supposed to start yet. Don't worry about that. Go get him. He's got a glorious belt buckle. He's got a glorious hat. He is just fantastic. The art's fantastic. Best crew in the game. Tier one. Nobody else is. Not yeah, even so, the cutest. If you guys are unsure why why we're gushing about Roger Carmel, on this channel, on the Trek Time channel, we reviewed his introductory episode of, of the original series called Mud's Women. And the plot of that is they take these three women who are being trafficked. It's, it's we're trafficking women. They give them a pill to make them more beautiful and sell them to lonely, desperate men, which sounds like the worst episode of all time. Believe it or not, it does get worse. Okay. But we watched it and we thought, you know what? <laughs> Roger Carmel is so damn entertaining as Harry Mudd. It actually distracted us from the entire plot of the episode. So, you know, that 60s television at its best and worst. This guy is, is a national treasure. And if you see him in anything, he's got this bon vivance. He's got this jubiality about him. He's so fun to watch on screen. And so, yeah, people have been asking for this card for forever. And his estate wouldn't wouldn't sign over the, the likeness rights. No one knows what's changed. We're making guesses, half-educated guesses. We're all just happy that we finally get a, a, an awesome Star Trek character in-game. And they made him a giveaway, which is nice so that everyone can get a copy. Nice art. Yeah, there's, there's there's not a whole lot to talk about in terms of stats here. He's fine. He's strong. He's usable. He's got three collections. Uh, one of them you may have already maxed out in Criminal Mind. So you know, it, it was. I think there's 17 purples in that collection. I guess it's due for a, a little bit of an expansion. Hopefully, we'll see those coming soon. Yeah. That idol. Uh, uh, sorry. Hello. Okay, <laughs> you're breaking up there. You're breaking up there, Dan. Uh, okay. Uh, no, he is. Let's go a rain. He is certainly a crew in the game. Uh, we need some flavor text, Auto. I already gave it to Did you. you sorry, I was trying to. I was trying to. I was trying to sort the my why my stream vintage timelines talk. <laughs> it's the classics. You're just gonna, you know, carry right, on. I'm gonna you, pull chat about. Mud. Will you cite? He's this talking crew? about his belt buckle. Okay. Uh, will you cite this crew? That's the question. Actually, do you fancy doing 50, uh, 250 Federation shuttles? That's the important thing. How do you find these objective events uh, in terms of... Is that of what it is? It's 250 uh, Federation oh, shuttles. Oh, fuck that. Oh, no. I'm not Successes, installing. actually. No. It's a lot. Oh, no. 200. Sorry. 200, not 250. Um, right, pull up and share, folks. Let us know what you think about this giveaway. Because this object they've had objective events, and they kind of vary them between different things. Like some involve gauntlet wins, some and most of them involve level up the crew, fuse the crew, fuse a very uh, use a certain amount of ship battles. This has those, but it does have two hundred federation. You've got a month to do it. It's not a problem, um, like over time. But these are essentially this is a giveaway of four stars. Like, uh, what would you want to be? Um, a more com not I'm not say competitive, but more challenging way to get like the fifth star to say like well, something to make this be more of achievement rather than just like hey this is thrown in the daily grind. You get your free star and you kind of grind to your other three stars. Uh, you know that actually just gave me the idea, and this may be the dumbest thing anyone's ever posited. Would it be a fun idea if you could sacrifice? A gold star of your choice to get a behold. Would that would that be fun for you? How only long would I you keep hitting that it. button? Well, only if it was guaranteed there was going to be no frozens. No, 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 no. They're they're not going to do that. If you could sacrifice one gold star to get a behold, how many times would you guys press that button? Like, there's a lot of two skillers. I would easily chew up. In, yeah, but they've in got the collections. You got to think about the trade. <laughs> Every crew has collections. Yeah. But, mm. Mm. No, Frank wouldn't <laughs> no, do it. No, I don't think I would. I'm too much of a collector. I suppose oh. it's a better option if my... No, not even, because if my roster is full um, and I was forced to, you know, airlock a crew for 550 honor, um, if I don't have a guarantee, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what if I about, could take that. What about you airlock a crew for 250 quantum? That sounds good. Mm. Nah. 
That's, that's one quarter of a crew. Unless the crew you're retrieving has four times the collections, I don't think that's worth it for me. Yeah, but we're talking... You, you're talking, you know, sale and exchange. You don't go to your used pawn shop and expect to get your same value for your... your, your well, I don't go to a used pawn shop, so <laughs> no, I wouldn't okay. do this either. I thought you said used porn shop, and I was really confused <laughs> we for did, a second. We, we, that's how we slip it past the sponsors. That's statement. very true. It's, 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 you know, the, it's Harry Mudd, the sticky pages of a, a magazine you found on the sidewalk. Uh, uh, of crew or is he decent i am i am shocked rage shadow legends turned you down shocked <laughs> <laughs> sorry i can't say pawn like a bag like that's a pawn shot you know it's not <laughs> anyway we need okay, to trigger would, would it change any of your would it change your excitement if this wasn't another dip command crew does that factor in or are you just happy no happy as mud it's, it's, the, it's great that it's okay. mud whatever, whatever situation he was only going to come in like the fact that he's here at all after all these rights issues and he's not completely terrible I mean to be fair I'm surprised he's not a four star if I'm honest but then I'd, I'd like to see him uh, in some of the gameplay which means I'd have to throw the sight on him mm. um, typically with a crew like this I would probably just wait until I was really close to earning a collection and then just you know throw the sight on him if it was an easy way to get over that that next threshold um, but for him I, I want him to fly I want him to get on a shuttle every once in a while get on a voyage I'll probably throw the star on you want him to you want him to hock the rest of your crew for cheap dilithium is that right <laughs> Do you so know, do it, semi... it's a crime, actually. The equipment isn't actually the drugs that he uses. The Venus drug. You could give your crew the Venus drug to make them better statistically. Yeah, but people would have to actually watch that episode to get the reference, and I, it's not worth it. Oh, right, because equipment so. is so much better. <laughs> Something that's not in any of Star Trek. Wait, Sorry. wait, you're saying rename the word equipment to Venus drug? Yeah. No, bro. Yeah. That's... No. No, 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 no. One of the worst. There's so many limericks you could use. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we should move on before we should I move on. Good this idea. is getting to. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of quick fire round here because we've got a lot, a few crew to go through, and I don't give a shit about any of them. Uh, or also, oh, it's broken again. What the fuck? Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, there we go. Norsican Thug is a super rare crew that is going to be available if you. Oh no, actually, have we skipped? Have we gone? We've already got Norsican Thug, haven't we? We've had that. That's fine. Like, the the only ago. reason he's the only reason he's brought up. <laughs> This is Auto's note, Wait, He's new to me. He's new to me, okay? The only reason he's brought up is, did they just release him because they they brought the hammer down and said, Stab Picard is never, ever, ever, ever coming out? Mm. Like, they could redo the art, maybe, so that he's not mm. so bloody. TLDR, uh, for people that don't know, uh, this was originally supposed to launch with a... Well, I think it was going to be... Ens no. Uh, Cadet... No, which is the Picard that's in the Honor Hall Star Voyage Picard. exclusive. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, Ensign Pickard. Ensign Pickard. Uh, to fuse with a Norsican thug um, to produce Stabbed Picard, which would be the one from Tapestry, where he's like, ah, and he's laughing. And it, actually, at the time, the, the stats for him were quite amazing. Like, I think he was like the number one or two Voyager uh, back in the Braxton days. Um, so, yeah, this was originally what this card was for. I think they kind of just went, we've got assets, we can save a week's worth of work, fuck it, release him. And that's the end of that story. Moving on. Uh, for podcast <laughs> listeners, were you waiting for Harry Mudd? Fifty percent love the actor Roger C. Carmel. Fifteen percent are just fifty percent are just happy for a giveaway. Why? No one doesn't know who Mudd is. So I'm, I'm glad their respondents didn't hit that option. I th I think it was a case of you know long ago they and and the team had told us that oh we've always got backup crew because something inevitably will happen with art approval or estate approval or something and we have to immediately swap out at the very last second i think they ran out of last seconds uh and this was like they reached in the barrel and said oh shit it's this or assimilated spock okay do this okay oh metikla you guys like gauntlet new gauntlet cruise out is it good is it worth it tier one apparently apparently is talk some more namer's veins are popping out of his head right now mm. Um, it's like omelets. Like omelets. <laughs> What's your favorite omelet filling? All right, I have, we haven't aired enough grievances on the show. Why do they need to make new Gauntlet crew like Voyager number four hundred? Is that an unwritten rule that they that they added? 
Why can't they be decent there as well? I think it's just because like you get them in Gauntlet, you use them for Gauntlet. I kind of agree with that. I think Mira Mariner was the 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 sort of uh, black sheep amongst the Gauntlet family because she is like big bases and kind of useful for nothing. But um, yeah, I kind of like the fact you win a Gauntlet crew to use in Gauntlet. The only thing I don't like is the fact that new players get locked out because everyone's got the Gauntlet crew, so it's it's harder to break in. Anyway, you haven't answered my question. What's your favorite type of omelet filling? Uh, I'm pulling that right now. So. Oh, okay. I quite like spinach. I like spinach in them. Cheese, onion, spinach, mushroom. Uh, good, th- throw a, maybe a ham or a bacon in there. Uh, that could be that could be pretty good. All right, pull up and share, folks. You let us know what your best omelet accompaniment is. Do you cook? Do you, if you cook, if do you cook omelets yourself? I used, I tend to use like a little bit of butter in there, and then throw a little bit of butter on top, just to kind of. No, my 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 butler does it for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I cook omelets. You just didn't know your your other half may have done it. I I struggle with eggs, so everything just oh, really? becomes scrambled eggs. Sadly, oh, so no, omelets a vision. What about you, Dan? Do you do you, are you an omelet? We got a good electric uh, griddle, so that works real well for that. And yeah, my I, I, the problem is with making omelets is I can't just make one for myself because the moment everybody else smells it, no, I've got to make five omelets for the whole family. <laughs> so. uh, but usually, usually veggies. I, I avoid spinach. Spinach has does anyone else get this where you eat the spinach and you have a little bit too much spinach, and then you. <laughs> Your teeth start to squeak. Is it? Wait, is it just me? <laughs> Wait, what? It's, I it's feel a like little. Like Dan's doing a bit here. <laughs> it's a little. It's a little. I'm, I'm being dead serious. It's a little astringent, and I think it just. Yeah, I. I can't tolerate. My my teeth can't tolerate See, too much. Spinach, I have that so. issue with with celery. You know that the stringy part of celery, even if oh, you chop it. I hate celery. No. The, the short way, you no. still get these little things that stick in your teeth. No, wait, no, so, hang on. How much, what, what, kind of, what kind of spinach are you putting in your omelet? Are you using like fresh, frozen fresh ones? Or fresh, it's fresh no, spinach. No, fresh. You get a fresh no, spinach. I put baby, that baby I've spinach. never had squeaky teeth from spinach. That, that's bizarre. You, you should ever... eat more spinach. <laughs> yeah, I put one right, You're all wrong because it's clearly cheese anyway. There's a oh, billion yeah. cheeses, and they all work with omelets, so it's cheese. Yeah. Oh no, no. My neighbor just spoiled me on spinach. He's saying it's all pesticide. Oh dear. Yeah. Wash your spinach. It's my yeah. enamel dissolving. If there's That's one thing is. you've learned from this stream is that Frank hates everything and you should wash your spinach. Anyway. Uh next group. Um is this gonna work now? No. Why the fuck is this breaking? Wait, hold on. We're not gonna talk about the It's fine. I mean He's alright. <laughs> Yay! It's a Gemini. Whatever. You have the Big Book podcast if you want to hear about that. Yeah, That's you right. got the event. Exactly. All right, let's see what's next on the ruler. Let's see if this button's going to fucking work this time. No, no. Oh, why is this breaking so much? <gasps> there we go. The Parvin. So my my browser search history is omelet accompaniments, how to spell omelet, and hairy mud. In a week's time on Tuesday, imagine your typical timelines player. It will be who the fuck is a blue cloud in Star Trek? Yeah. So and it, why are they trying to sell it to intelligent me? Intelligent inhabitants of the planet Pavo living in complete harmony with the world around them. I also have not seen whatever this Discovery is episode Discovery is from. season one. Uh, they go to a my that my is... dog died from Pavo. I think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they go to a planet and uh, they find out that this, this, these beings on the planet aren't hostile. They're actually some sort of musical communication entity that can transmit through subspace. It's actually quite a good episode. Uh, but then I am a disco, disco season one apologist. I take, I have no regrets for that. Uh, I like the art. I think the art's really good. Apart from the fact, apart man. from good a, art. Apart from, yeah, you're gonna say it. Good art, six collections. I'm sold. That's okay. all I need to know. I was gonna say good art. Apart from the fact they've cropped it. Why make an art where you can't see yeah, like twenty percent of it? What the fuck? <sighs> it's good. It feels like they shaped. So this way, you said this was season one discovery. Yes, I watched season one discovery, and I have no recollection of this. Yeah, Remember the one where Saru goes a bit mental on the planet no. side, and he starts stalking the crew, and there's the uh, the Klingons try and invade the planet, and then Lorca does the amazing maneuver where they 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 they, they, they um, spore drive all around them and nuke the Klingon ship. That's every. Oh, I do remember that. Okay, oh, all right. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you got it. Where they yeah. Get it. yeah, that was the plan. So they did the cool thing, not just the the blue fart thing. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is actually they they found a, a local methane depository and they lit it on fire and it's like wow that's card art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is just one of Neelix's farts. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. Remember when we used to spend eight hours during the week carefully sculpting, uh, cultivating crew notes and show notes, and this is what we're going to talk about. Well, let's record some bits. Now we're like, this is just a blue methane fart. Whatever, let's move on. Anyway, next crew. Uh, if this freaking thing is going to work for me today, what are you doing to me? It's broken. No, no, that's not that one. Right, uh, not... Well, well, it's only letting me skip one crew at a time for some reason today. Dr. Simon Van Gelder. We're going to go all over the shop. Hey, he's a new Voyage exclusive. Here's an actual genuine topic of discussion. How are you guys finding the increasing number of Voyage exclusives being thrown? Frank, talk about this while I go to the toilet. <laughs> well, what a fantastic timing. So, uh, if, if yeah. you played the game, Frank, what would you If I played the game. If I played the game, I'd be really pissed off. But since I don't play the game and I uninstalled it for this very card and this very reason, uh, I'm fine. I sleep great at night now. I slept so good last night. Uh, like, I almost pissed myself. I was so relaxed. It's great. Um, but right now I can feel my kidneys failing from all the energy drinks. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he he's a real good crew. He's, like, real good med. I mean, everybody needs good med. He's, like top of the line med if you're fortunate enough in one in 10,000 instances over 10,000 years to get a voyage exclusive behold uh, and you already have Admiral Black who I would argue more valuable for his gauntlet abilities pick him he's good uh, but so's uh, Nurse Chapel when we take a chapel so I mean eh, <sighs> It, it just it, the pain point for me is it's a card collecting game, but you can't get these. I can get I brute when Omelet came out. I had them in three days because I brute forced the fuck out of Gauntlet. I spent a lot of dilithium and a lot of merits and ruined a lot of people's days, and went on really ridiculous streaks. And then when streaks didn't work, I reset at six every time, and I got them within three days. And I said, well, the, good okay. thing, the good thing is now all those energy drinks are going to give you some streaks too. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to uh, the, the first to max, uh, Bebo the Bow Bear on Dr. Simon Van Gelder, who was one of those 10,000, one in 10,000 lucky shots and was the first to get him back alive. So congratulations there. Um, fantastic crew. I just it, uh, One of the things I do like about them putting out uh, Voyage exclusives on a regular schedule is it makes the decision whether or not to cite them so easy. Uh, if we know that every three months or so there's going to be a new one coming out and they're all going to be of this power level, the moment you get them back, put those sights on them, get them working for you, because there's always going to be another one down the line. And when those beholds come up, it's it's super easy just to pick the one you don't have. No worries about all fuse beholds. It's great. You're assuming you're getting beholds. Yeah, you got to get the first star for that <laughs> plan to work. Uh, pull up and chat. You, you, you're so bubbly for... Uh, uh... Uh, Dan, we really need you today to offset things. <laughs> no, this, I'm with Frank on this one. I've seen one exclusive crew and there are five in the game and they're going to, they're going to add them every other month. Like what, you know, uh, maybe, maybe their metrics tell them this is working. People are playing longer to try to get this crew. I don't think that's the case. And I think you're ticking off the people who have poured the most money into this game, the addicted collectors, and you're going to tell them, here are five crew you're not allowed to pay us for? I think that's a terrible business strategy, but I don't run a business, so maybe I'm an idiot in that regard. Personally, I think it sucks. I'd like to, you know, make it 20 times more common and give us a little token that says when you collect 20 of these, you can go to the honor hall and pick the crew you want. That would, because if, if I'm playing for a few months and I get up to 10, 10 tokens, I might think, okay, good, I'm halfway there. I'll keep churning out these voyages, and then I'll be able to pick the one I want. Can I get a freak but, off you know, as well? Determinism is the enemy of, of these evil capitalists, so they're going this route. I think it's a bad idea, but what do I know? Remember we talked about, like, Gauntlet Beholds, and then they kind of did that, and then they put it in voyages? And now everyone thinks. Well, but it idea. doesn't even help if if they keep no, adding no. a crew every other month. You're not going to see a, a third of them in, in that behold. So. Honestly, I think if you get to a 14 or 16 hour voyage with like continuum, you should just get that behold, and that would encourage people. Like 14 hour behold, 14 hour voyage is instant. You get this behold. That would encourage people to use equipment. That would help alleviate. You know, it's the same people went. The same reason people went fishing for the uh, voyage super rays. You know, you have to get certain dilemmas. People targeted them. People went on long voyages to get those crew. 
and the same should apply here, especially if they're going to dilute the pool. Pool, you go right. I'm going to go on 14 hour voyages, and oh, it's another all frozen. Okay, I'll try again next time. Ah, another star for Simon Van Gelder. Okay, great. You can at least work on something with this random chance. It's just like mm, I don't even want to try. Because... So you're saying you're saying they're, they're diluting the pool by peeing in it. Okay. Your take. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <clears throat> And with my final rant of the day, communication is key. I, along with so many people in the community, have been yelling into a void for one year because Chakotay became a Voyage exclusive over one year ago, January of last year. Really? Wow. Still hadn't even seen him yet. That was even before Beholds. And people said, hey, really happy for you but you need to come up with a different method. This sucks. And then they added another, and then they added another, and the voices grew louder and yelled a little louder. Hey, this sucks. You need to find an alternate way to the point where they did it again. And I Oops. said to Ben, and I said to Ben, as he drew big giant Spock to try and pop the crowd, uh, <laughs> hi, do you have any plans to change this? No, we have nothing in the works. We didn't know it was a pain point. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I've just uninstalled your game. I'll check back in six months. Well, Discord look, DM like that. I didn't know it was a problem. I'm sorry. Bullshit. Communication. It's hard for them to know community feedback when they don't That's because interact with the community. So. <laughs> their community. Their community managers aren't passing stuff along because they've got to work on <sighs> Legends and make sure that 500 people can buy that for $20 to subsidize it. Like, I, well, podcast I, listeners, add mushrooms and cheese to your omelets. Uh, I want to shout out Shy Point <laughs> in chat, who says he loves the RNG aspect of Voyage Exclusives. It levels the playing field. Okay, I can I can understand that because uh, people with deep wallets will always get the crew before you. In this case, maybe they won't. Uh, and not just talking about first max, you know, uh, being able to get a random one. It actually it's a nice feeling when you get the jackpot. But if you never get the jackpot, you don't get to enjoy that feeling. So. Is it as simple as just bumping up the jackpot chance? Would that help things? Or would that fix things? I don't know. Is it... Dan, how does it feel to be on your first like Timelines Talks rant episode? Like I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to hold the line, but man, it's tough. You guys She <laughs> hangs bloody Voyager crew members from the ceiling and she gets diplomacy? Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, uh, Simon Van Gelder. Uh, all right, I have to reset this because this is just all kinds of broken. I don't know why. Next one. No, that's not working. No, that's not working. Why the fuck is this broken so much? Do that. Desert Trip Tucker. He is now the uh, next campaign's Uber crew. Uh, if, if, you know, if you weren't satisfied by having Gascana Tucker topless, well, they put his top on, gave him the goofiest looking shades possible. He's now standing in possibly the most just default if it wasn't a t-pose i would say this is the default model rendering pose um <laughs> Dude, can we get a t-pose crew that would be so funny <laughs> just, yeah. neelix t-pose that'd be great um <laughs> um do you want to buy this crew i don't uh, i know at least racing liners is happy to get another trip oh yeah tucker in the game to preempt star's question it's for enterprise and trip lovers mm. yes and congratulations to those people who also get if they pay the 25 dollars the little avatar gimmick uh with connor's face on it i mean yeah. r.i.p show by the way yeah boy that blew up fast yeah both both dominic and then uh, connor both left the, their own show uh, which is like and what, okay, what, we have a Not voice. Connor was on a cruise. Yeah. He was like, "Oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> bye." Yeah. All all the COVID podcasts are starting to fall apart, though. Timelines talks, but not this one. <laughs> well, no, no, no. <laughs> well, okay, maybe. Timelines talks is, but <laughs> but Trek time isn't. We're still doing stuff. We're still together. We're Look still at the strong. definition on his teeth. Wow, you could see every every single one of them. <sighs> That's that's about what I have to say about this crew. It, one of the dangerous. Things, so we talked a little bit before before the stream too. Basically, if you uh, subscribe to Timelines Talks Plus, <clears throat> you'll get the full unedited twenty four hour stream of all of us just talking about all this junk off of stream. So look forward to that, guys. We'll be actually. I did record about because of British fucking British Standard Time. <laughs> the three of us got on an hour early and talked shit about Idol. So we Sounds may like or may not be releasing to that to our channel. <laughs> It may be some content and then just about a, a, a thirty minutes of bleep. So. No, but seriously, can we actually can we can we consider doing like like a twenty four hour stream? With, like, <laughs> do you reckon we could do it? 
If it's if it's mostly cats, I think we could probably yeah, manage it. So actually, my favorite um, image. If you go onto our Discord, you'll see an image uh, auto posted of me, you, and uh, me also and Dan <laughs> holding up our cats. Oh, <laughs> being cat time. enjoyers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, to this... an alien. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you. No, yeah. God forbid we talk about the crew on another show. Lured to an alien world and pulled into a power struggle, Tucker and Archer are forced to wander under the scorching sun, awaiting rescue. Yeah, so I mean, this crew is a little ho hum. It's you know, the sec primary is fine if you need it. Uh, there's fewer of those, and there are dip and command, so I'll give them credit for that. Uh, some collections, it's fine. Uh, the one thing that it purports to do exceedingly well is is its ship battle ability. If we're looking in the the big book dot app, we can see that it's rated number thirteen right now. But I've got a bone to pick with that. Yeah, me too. Um, it's it's Namer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're working on it, but uh, yeah, he's he's got a kind of a hull repair ability. It's a little bit slow. It's unlimited, but he's got a, a low attack bonus. Just everything about this crew just doesn't quite add up. And so it brings to to the discussion about how how we're using these crew in our fleet boss battles and what incentive we have to really replace them if and when a better one comes along. Um, I don't think this crew should be your last hull repair. I don't think it should be your first hull repair crew. They're just better ones to retrieve even at the first star. Um, that'll do the job a whole lot better for you. Um, so really, in almost all categories, I would say this is just an average crew. Uh, again, you're buying the the campaign for the the what do you get four gold citations? You don't that's have where to the take, real value is. You don't have to take yeah. them. Like you can actually get that behold, and that's the kind of the best part of a Uber campaign is you're buying for a behold, which like at the at the very worst, you'll get Tucker because like you will you you won't be all frozen. Um, that's kind of the best part. I wish they would do that with the premium tier as well. Um, and you know, you know, that, that's a, that, that's. It looks like it looks like one of Frank's alts has shown up to give his comment on this crew. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Shit. Uh, all right. Uh, that's, that's my bit. You son of a bitch. <laughs> give me that mustache back. Hand it up. Oh, hang on. Is this gonna work? No, I'm gonna have to turn this off, turn it on, and then move it until we get to. No, not Wixaban. You said we're not gonna talk about Wixaban, but we may have to if this doesn't go past. If you talk about Wixaban, I'll walk off the show. <laughs> you are Wixaban hey. from discussing. No, actually, Wixaban. actually, Wixaban if you want to find out more about the Star Trek fact files and in each individual episode, each individual issue, there is actually a website called Wixaban which catalogs them all. Yes. <laughs> it's very good. It's, but, it's funny that it was named that, but yeah. yeah. Um, Peldor Joy Kira, which I'm actually quite disappointed the art isn't her just clapping furiously but I suppose you can't get that um, without animating it. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, the other way. Uh, no, Peldor... you could get it. They could, af- they could absolutely do that and everyone would. Okay. Here's yeah. a question. Here's a question. Would you pay extra for an animated crew card? The game couldn't um, handle it. My phone would catch on fire. <laughs> Actually, I think I kind of would. It, depending on the crew. Mm. Like, if it was a, a character I really loved and they were doing something iconic. Like, if it was, uh, what's his name? The Romulan and best. If if he went, it's a fake. Yeah, and he lifted gonna, wait, it up wait. and his mouth opened, I would pay an extra no, thousand dilithium. I think so. It. So here's the thing about premiums. Uh, so any Magic the Gathering enjoyers will be familiar with foil cards or holographic cards in Pokemon. And and so they do the same thing, right? It's the same thing, but you get a little bit of bling, a little bit to show off. And in those games, you're supposed to be playing across from an opponent. So there's there's a little bit of a, a, you know, a wow factor in being able to outshine your opponents quite literally with the cards you put on the table. Um, you know, maybe maybe it gives you a little bit of a, a cred, right? But here we've got basically just single player games, and while we compete, we don't get to see each other's cards while we compete. So, animated cards are purely for our own enjoyment. I, I suggest that if you were going to invest in anything that you wanted to see these characters move around, just go ahead and buy a Paramount Plus subscription and watch <laughs> the damn shows. Yeah, you're not wrong. Well, I, there's Gauntlet, maybe Arena. They could like animate the portrait or something. But yeah, just to, I guess um, that's true. That just would always wait. that would just be like a static picture, and then just the parts would move, and it would just. <laughs> yeah. And we all crapped upon what they did with the, the equipment cards, right? With the gold, you know, oh, yeah. scanning well, lines that, that was, go across. That's terrible, and, oh, yeah. though. It's that's lazy. Be, it's lazy. Fixed. But that's how a lot of games represent their holographic cards in mobile games, is to have that little effect that they were trying yeah, to get. Well, I don't, need, I don't need a shiny foil. I just want, like, Harry Mudd to take off his hat or something. I'm, I'm paying money for that. Are you kidding me? 
So that's the kind of one thing about the the, the work work for me, and I'm going to wake Booter up now. Uh, work for me for Marvel Snap is like you see your opponents, and you'd have the same cards, you'd have the same decks, but they would have different variants. Their variants would have different foils, and you'd be looking. You wouldn't, you know, you'd probably lose against them. But you'd be like, hey, that guy's got a cool card or a cool variant of that card, or hey, that's cool. You kind of don't get that with Timelines in Gauntlet. You just kind of go like, oh right, they've quipped their black. Okay, I'm gonna fight. Fuck it, refresh. I'll Actually, spend fifty merits. This is another game I play where there's a lot of microtransaction. It's a free-to-play game with a lot of uh, effects, like character effects. And when they make you load into town, the effects take up so much processing power. It takes like uh, an extra 30 seconds to load into town just because of everyone's microtransactions. So uh, I guess there's a limit to that sort of thing. Anyway. So Peldor, Peldor Joy Kira, Kira, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the crew. <laughs> Wait, did we not even talk about? Yeah, we just made the other up and then just start talking about what if my plan. He's the best card on our list, and we're like, nah. Yeah. All right, Kira puts on a short but spectacular fire show, and the Bajoran Gratitude Festival begins. Is there any particular reason? I mean, I just think she's just like mixing up a bong right now. That's that's the only thing I can see. I, think, I thought she was seasoning it with some salt and pepper shakers, <laughs> but yeah, it's better. Tastes good. <laughs> Uh, we've been we you know we've been talking about art. It's it's unique art. Uh, it's eye catching art. It's got a prop. We all like props. Also, how does it feel I that can't... this might be the last crew we ever talk about on on Timeline Talks? Wait, is that the list? Yeah, <laughs> we're already talking about Simon Van Gelder. All right, we'll 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 throw in a Wix and for Timeline Talks one hundred <laughs> just to really put a bow on things. Look forward to that. <clears throat> you know. Actually, if this is the last car we talk about, there wouldn't be a bit. We've been doing All the right. Bajoran clap since like episode two. That's and true. It's that fun is a good art, point, actually. Yeah. And, and we've had a billion Kiras, so that 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 wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. And the card? Did you get? I haven't even looked at this. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> what a way to go out. I, I, I'm, I may I'm assuming there's some dip. There's like a little bit of size somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, well, she's she's brewing potions, so there better be some science. Yeah, mm. but... It's got about as much science as uh, Dark du- Raw has, really. <laughs> Too much? <laughs> Too soon? Answer? Too much science. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Do we have anything else on the show notes? Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. Hold we on. Do, do we have a half Yes. Hour oh, my burn? gosh. Right, fuck it. Fuck crew. They're all the same. Cite who you want. No one gives a shit. Okay. Uh, trait audits. Oh, no, we've spoken about that. Well, okay. Are we doing this? Because it's 6.30 now in the Eastern time. Do you guys have 30 minutes to kill? Uh, okay, no strong answer. Let's do it. <laughs> then I, it'll be you and me left if, if we have to. This is okay, the last. Okay, fine, fine. Right, let's go We're on to what you've put. Auto... Talk about the making events less grindy. No, it, no? we're doing we we're doing art work. Hello. Oh, we're gonna do that. You're just gonna skip. Two, okay, we're just gonna skip two points. We've probably already spoken about. Right, fine. We're making the show less grindy, and we're gonna do tier <laughs> art instead. All right, let me get rid of this. Okay, I think it is very much time. We had a. No! This Wednesday on UPN, an all-out war. Competitors from all over the cosmos go head to head in a battle for supremacy. Captain Kirk versus Spock. Captain Kirk versus the Gorn. Captain Kirk versus basic human decency. Find out who will fall and who will be victorious on Timeline Showdown. I just wanted to use that. Because <laughs> we're going to be tearing art we're not having a showdown we're actually going to be tearing art and uh how you find uh, you know well also this is your section you tell us the the best way to introduce all right this. we got 25 crew arts from timelines that we're we going to tier s a b c d i'm going to pull each one for one minute you got one minute to vote on this crew all right and if it's tied then this esteemed panel of judges are going to break the tie so who's the first crew up uh let's go for data as masaka All right, pull up. I, oh, it, it may be misspelled. I don't care. What's your sadab? This is this is as close to T posing as you can get, right? That <laughs> open hand. <The> data posing. <laughs> I think Odana was T posing, but they cut her fingers off, right? So. Yeah. 
By the way, this is going to be progressive. I'm going to be adding more to this this structure as it goes on. Opinions, gentlemen. Um, I mm, I'm going to go with a C. It that you should have been heavy a on B. I hate cards that look directly at the camera. I really do. Like that that winds me up so much. I don't think he ever actors in the yeah apart from you frank uh, actors in the show never look at the camera that's something that never happens because it's just weird so why are they doing it in in timeline so uh, do you know what no actually i'm gonna go no no c c is my vote well you're you're being overruled by the chat who say b anyways so what the fuck do they know <laughs> <laughs> gee I, I wonder why this is the last time i saw <laughs> no i'm feeling really salty now all right go on what go on? The poll you go on. Done. You go on. Put oh, on I have to announce it. I, this on. is your poll. I already said B. Are you right, listening fine. at all? Sorry. All right. No. Data. Machine man data. Professionalism. Actually, I'm going to make him really small because it's funny. That's machine... not a character. That's not data. Again. That's <laughs> Machine man Paris. Sorry. Breakneck okay. speed. There's no time. Hold on. We we have a giant tiering website that I sent you the link for that we could put on screen. You sent me the website? Oh my god. Yes, it's TPG. How did we make it to 99? How did we make it to 99 episodes? <laughs> oh, you did. Sorry, you sent me the yeah. Google Drive. By the way, the pull up the chat. Well. Oh, right, hang on. Why did you oh send me god. the images as well? Because I asked you, would you like the images as well? You said yes, that would be helpful. So I spent an extra 20 minutes putting images together. Right, right, right. I will use this. Okay. <laughs> who who put it? up this poll? Otto, you spelled data wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang All right. on. Who's fixing... voting B? This is not a guys. This is terrible art. It looks like he it's has a mustache awful. and he doesn't. This right. is bad art. <gasps> Why is this not showing up? Right there we go. It's because of... there we go. Right. Okay. 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 A. So I I'm voted I, I'm A. So excited! I get me? to be part of a genuine professionalism moment this is fantastic <laughs> this, is, this is why bands break up by the way all right we're missing all the heads on these though so what what was dangerous masaka dangerous which he's b right there he we was go b and... machine man paris is also b what that's ridiculous look right, the people have there. voted that's crazy b for bad maybe but all right we got no heads all right hang on uh, okay, yeah, who is next? Just go to app and pull up the crew if you want to see what they no, look no, like. No, 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 we're fine. If we you want to animate to... them, just grab your mouse and move them around a bit. Timeless Chicote. Timeless Chicote. There he is on the screen. What would we vote for Oof. him? Now, you folks right. in America may may experience this. I don't know about you Brits or people from made-up countries. There's a commercial that airs like every five seconds on TV for a, uh, a drug called Jardians. Now, I know in other countries you can't like advertise drugs but here in america everything goes anyway this commercial is all about like a song and a dance routine and i cannot unsee it it really bugs it's the most annoying commercial of all time but the lady that's on it right now she's like dancing around and singing and everything her shoes don't fit and they come off every time she moves and like she steps her foot forward and her shoe falls off and it's like in every frame of the commercial and it just bugs the shit out of me anyway this is like the worst art ever <laughs> I think it's it's technically proficient, but they have the worst directorial choice of all time to pick a guy in an honor hall where you don't know who he is. Imagine if you never watched Voyager. God, that's what a world it. That's the whole brief. <laughs> C. He's C. Right, he's a C. He's if a this C. is not a D, if Machine Man Paris is not a D, what guys? What are you doing? Something has to be the bottom of the barrel here. All right, let's go over to. Hang on, Don't worry, go. we have worse ones coming. Well, we do. If, what if about? If I didn't watch Voyager, I wouldn't hey, know which is a band. There we go. On the animated crew. How about Dealer? Dealer or no Dealer? Was that one of yours, Dan? Dude, this is yeah. S tier. This, yeah, is, this so is so S-tier. good. This is the best art they've done all year. Come on. I agree. <laughs> okay. I agree. I think this is good. No, Dan no, Frank. Really good. I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much. I'm finally gonna go pee now that Idol did. <laughs> we can't go at the same time. It'd be awkward. Uh, yeah, I'll say I like the contrast. You can even see her standing next to any of the other images on the screen. How just drab they are compared to the brightness they were able to bring here. So that's great. Wow, a lot of respondents, and they all like her in S tier. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a definite S. Definite S. Does, does it bother you guys that that great art is on a super rare? 
I thought it. No, I thought she was a gold. Is it a super rare? Isn't she's not a gold? No, I must. Did I immortalize? Hang on, I need to check if I immortalized her. Did I miss? You're her? thinking of the the campaign gold. I'm thinking of her donor, aren't I? She was uh, a super rare. That's crazy. That's dumb. They can't give good art to super rares. Anyway, let's go on to uh, ubiquitous Borg Queen. Ubiquitous. Oh, I'm gonna. Ubiquitous. Ubi- Ubi- oh, I like this that. That's very good. All right, pull up and chat. Ostensibly. Yeah, I, I mean, I like that you can see every one of the tubes. I like, I like tubes. <laughs> Dan is a tube man. So, I think they they probably struggled with the reference photo because it was so dark in that series, and she's like mounted on the wall. So I think actually yeah. they did better than they had any right to do. No, definitely, and it was not exciting. Oh no, she must have been a Tuesday pack. I couldn't get her. Sorry, talking about dealer. Um, yeah, she yeah. looks like she has tummy troubles though. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's just she's doing the. Um, Buffalo Bill thing from um, uh, uh, the butterflies. Uh, no, what was it called? Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. The That's the one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she's doing the Buffalo Bill thing, where she's doing the dance to uh, you know. You find me. She's doing the data. You in what is it in Brothers where he's got to pat his head and rub <laughs> his tummy at the same time? That's what she's doing. <laughs> uh, a lot of people saying, "Hey." <laughs> Chat, chat thinks A, so there you go. Chat thinks A. All right, ubiquitous ball queen in A. Wait, you didn't put her on here, also. Oh yes, you did. There she is. All right, okay. <laughs> Just gonna keep blaming you until things work. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seska and Kala <laughs> say Kala. Frank's Kala. gonna miss it. Uh, <laughs> this is Frank's favorite crew. He this has is. he has the whole Amazon page on bookmark for this office chair, so he can buy it and reenact this image. All up in chat. I reckon he could get his hair to look like that as well. He'd grow out a little bit. I'm just, talking about... Just don't wash it for a few weeks. You're pretty much there, yeah. yeah Does yeah. the 90s office chair make this art better or worse? I I don't know. I, I mean, want to say worse, but it's really fun to talk <laughs> about. So I, don't I mean, know. it's a bit of nostalgia, right? I mean, it's for... not far off from the chair I'm sitting in now, to be honest, apart from the lower back and <laughs> the, the, the white stripe, you know. I, do you know right, I'd... but this is supposed to be 300 years in the future, so... <laughs> yeah, but it's Kazon technology. So it's backwards. Oh, that's they, true. They they are perfectly formed human beings, but they're they're stuck on one dead. No, they are they are a, a race of species that have entire starships and fleet of starships, but they go water. Oh, water! I need water. Like there you go. Uh, oh, it's looking like a it's looking like a solid B. Man, what's Frank doing? Is he finding some more energy? Drinks? He had six drinks. Give him a break. He's he's quitting <laughs> again. All right. How about one of Auto's favourites? Uh, or uh, Homesteader Chicote, someone that you had very passionately. Okay, it looks like they put him through that face app where it de-ages you. You know what I mean? He yeah, looks like he's he's got kind of a toddler face. I like that he's holding like a prop, but the face is so not good. He's holding his own ugly stick. It kind of looks like his nose is out of alignment Quit with his mouth yourself. as well. Quit hitting yourself. <laughs> Why is his hair so flat as well? This is yeah. oh, that's that's just Robert Beltran. That was actually how it looked. <laughs> that's a that's a D. Yeah. So flathead, I'm crushing your head, flathead. I, I think I'll say C. It's not it's not objectively awful. It just has some like uncanny valley elements to it. It's so. just weird. It's 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 not Robert Beltran. It's probably less Robert Beltran than Timeless Chakotay. His it's, nostril it's little... is enormous. Look how big that nostril yeah, is. That's it's a good point. Little... What the fuck? Is that the Coke nostril? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> no. It's little Bobby Beltran from seventh grade, okay? That's who it is. <laughs> oh, we've got a tie for the first time. All right, three people. We gotta vote before Frank gets back. I'll D. say C tier. D. D. All right. Uh Dan, you're you're breaking the tie here. C or D. I'll give I'll give I'll give him the D any day. <laughs> oh, oh that's right. He's down there. He's got that our first bad. D. Okay. All right. Speaking of uh, Voyager crew in uh, plain clothing, she's going to look up there gonna, and go, "What the fuck?" Um, we're going to need a name for the poll. Concerned concerning flight Janeway. <sighs> oh, so many characters. All right, pull up and chat. I don't think this is bad. People are no, saying like it's this. bad. I think it's 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 a quite. I don't mind. You know, true life rendering. I like it. It's not good. Yeah, pose, the execution but... isn't isn't really popping to me. It's it's just again another one of those drab things that again and again they it's just use the reference photo. They put it in their paint program. 
they overlay a couple extra brush strokes over top and they call it a day, right? But but that just winds up making it look dark and it doesn't really pop. Um, but that said, I, I like what they chose for this. So yeah, I'll give it an A. You're not funny. People have 60 seconds to vote idle. Put her face on screen. <laughs> okay, Thank here it you. is. <laughs> there you go. Just dingy. She looks dingy. Uh, I should vote on this. Well, she, I, she's running okay. around the okay. Italian okay. countryside flying on flying machines. So Yeah, the shoes are really good. She's got some nice shoes. It's a good heel on that. A good turn on that heel. Let's get Frank deep. back to comment on the shoes. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, those Jimmy Choo's? No, uh, Birkenstocks. They're not Birkenstocks. No, oh. they're not. All right. I, I feel like everyone's going in B tier today, by the way. B for Birkenstocks. When they're confused, they vote B. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 like vote, uh, pre-rating a Twilight Zone episode of Seven. <laughs> it's a coping mechanism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about the Twin Mistresses of Evil? All right. Pull okay. up and share. Uh, <sighs> yeah, that's A tier. No, oh, it's S tier. That's S tier. Is it S or A? I, that's where I'm at. S or oh, A. Like, there they go. I think it's very it, good. It, it's fine. It just looks like they both wet their pants, and I can't quite figure it out. Oh, God. Does it? <laughs> Up a little, oh, idle. No. Why have you done this? Yeah. <laughs> They're a little moist. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you better go to the bathroom too, Dan. Yeah, I, I got, I got, I got uh, Cerveza Crystal on the mind okay. here. And, uh, so you got what? You know what? You know. I'm, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, you've just, you've just killed the last. You've just killed all the card packs from this game. You've cost WRG sixteen point <laughs> three million dollars. I, I just ruined the art for Admiral Eric Nelson, unfortunately. But can can too, you so. remove the other crew who are covering the tearing? Absolutely not. <laughs> Hang on. I like <laughs> let elbows. Just, let me let me just put Jane Way down a little bit. Jane Way's oh. elbows. <laughs> 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 Alright, we got another tie. So we have to vote uh... Queen Mistresses of Evil. Idol. No, no, Dan. You you broke the tie, so you gotta go this for it. This is an S tier. This is fantastic. This is it's so, so good. Idle. It's an S tier. Alright, but I vote D, which averages down to a B. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. S tier is fine. S tier. It's S tier. All right, all right. Uh, did, all right, I suppose I should move Jane way out of your face as well. Okay, um, who's next? Sydney LaForge. Okay, I got a bone to pick with this art. Paul up in chat. I get that they're going for the reference photo they were given, but no person looks this purple in real life, right? Her she's face a little purple. Is, she's yeah, very purpley. I, I can't even see purple properly, and she looks purple to me. Are you so colorblind? I'm glad you said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I red, did green, not know that. red, green. So everything's a little off. Oh wow! It's nice because I can't tell when the grass has died. So I, you know, <laughs> I don't. I, I think it's purple think it's... grass. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's grown some real whack shit, man. <laughs> I, I like to believe Frank positive. is voting on his phone from the bathroom right now. <laughs> uh, I don't mind. I like it. I think it's a B. I, I think it's okay. I don't. I think it's it's more like the dark tone is supposed to sort of implement that the she was on the Titan when they had all the lights down and there was sort of a bit of dr dramaticism. So I th I think it's I think it's perfectly fine. You know, actually, no, I've already voted. I think it's more an A, but I voted B already. You can't you can't vote in chat. We're the tiebreakers. We have to remain impartial. Oh, sorry, too late. Anyways, to see. <laughs> so nothing oh, matters. Uh, 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 come on, come on. All right. How about Sus Mana to Paul? I mean, okay. This is this is gross art. Mana mana. Du, 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 du. Mana mana. Her expression is right. is bad. Pull up and check. Can how far can we zoom in on her face? Because mm. that's really the star of this episode. Oh, real far. Hang on. Well, <laughs> looks like that collagen was a success on her lips there. This is a photo. This is just a photo. Yeah, yeah they yeah they just do some brush strokes over top. Mm. Call it their own. How dare you? This is hand drawn. Every hair on her <sighs> head. I was never hand drawn. <laughs> right, this is dude. This is worse than Chicote. How could this be a tier above Chicote? Well, you guys are crazy. Mm, it's pretty gross. I think. Uh... I don't know. I don't also, mind. It. I think it's also, an awkward pose. I think it's the pose hold more on. than anything. The fact that they made this a gauntlet crew, so you have to look at it. Your opponents have to look at this crew is egregious. 
I think I I I don't mind it. I think it's okay. I think it's it's a bad. I say a, a bad post. Oh fuck! Hang on, a bad post more than anything. Sorry, I'm losing the background <laughs> instead of anything else. British sensibility strike again. All right, no, no. the chat says C, so we respect the C. Well, fine. I'm going for C. Okay, next up, Captain Tuvok, looking like he is. Uh, Saggy pants, Tuvok. Yeah, looking like he's uh, caught on the bad end of a. His droopy dog. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe you said that. He literally is a. Uh, yeah, he's, hey, can he's I, a Hanna Barbera can anyone character. Do a good droopy dog? I'm a very I... important captain. <laughs> yeah, he could Man, use I'm a gonna, belt or something. I'm I don't get Tim know. Russell I'd like to offer shit. you a commission, Seven of Nine. <laughs> Wow. Where the hell is Frank? Dude, this is the... <laughs> he only shows up to complain, but not for the fun part. Come on. <laughs> Literally. This is the carrot at the end of the yeah. stick, by the way, for... What have I done to earn yeah. disrespect? I've, I've got to say C. Like, it's right below average. It's okay, technically, but some of the choices, stylistic choices, were not fun. You're crazy. This is a straight D. This is just awful. I hate wow, it. Wow, really? I really? hate this wow. card. I don't find it that I play bad. with it on my arena sh ship every day, and I hate it. It's a C. Wow. I, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's okay. Uh, it's one of the occasions where you don't see the full body, and they make him standing. I think it works, but okay. That's just me. What about Scorpion Tendi? <laughs> Alright, pull up in chat. Okay, once again, they cut off half of half the body. Yeah, so that's why? Bad. I think this is great. I love this art. Yeah, say what you will about the animated cards, but this is really they—they they did a good job making it kind of jump off the page here, like the perspective. I love the torn uniform still clinging onto her. I'm sure that was just you know part of the episode, mm -hmm. but it's really neat that they kept it in. I I like what they've done with because there was that period where we didn't know what they were going to do with lower decks crew art and whether they were going to try and do something artistic or whatever with it but they've kind of just like oh we'll keep it original to the show and add some shading hey kitty cat this is my kitty cat my I, it has a lot of promise but you just when you just slice off part of an art yeah that's i do i there's no excuse for that like move yeah, the tail like or change the perspective don't get your cat drunk and they did that with pavas as well what? Well, I, that one makes a little more sense because it's supposed to be like huge and ethereal and yeah, yeah, but it's like it's a gaseous anomaly with just huge cuts down the side. But oh well, a, a it is another A. Wow. Uh, what about? Okay, hang on. Let me just make her a little bit smaller. No, that's the wrong crew. Never mind. Uh, rejoined Jadzia Dax. Let's just let's just get the top body part of the body there. <clears throat> Paul Ooh. and Chet. Uh, this face looks remarkably similar to Darlene Kursky. To like where I see when I just see the avatar, the headshots, I kind of get them confused. So yeah, it's a little a little redundant, but uh, this is this is really wonderful. I love the color. I I dream of Jed Zia. <laughs> yeah, a little <laughs> yeah, bit, isn't true. it? Yeah, <clears throat> that's good. No, I really like it. I think it's wow. Good. There's votes for S and D tiers, so people are split on. Oh, wow, this one. Jesus, who's voting D on this? Can we see? <laughs> I need to name and shame. <laughs> no, I mean that's their that's their vote. Well, that's fine. No, I think this is. I do. do you reckon they're yeah. voting D because it just isn't them kissing um, Lenara Khan? Do you reckon that's the only reason? That's what they were expecting uh, was no. just like the, the yeah the fusion art. Oh yeah, a little bit of Colby Smolders there. Good good shot, Shyaporn. Uh, I like it. I think it's better than B. A lot of people are voting B. Not well, B, B it uh, is, so there you go. I think it's better I think it's better than B. Better than B. Next up is appropriate attire Navesa. Hold on, what what's it what's she actually called? Appro Appropriate an appropriate attire Navesa, I think. That's what they're sure. Maybe not. Okay, the beers are kicking in, so I'm I'm having trouble with the spelling. This is stunning. Like, yeah, I like this. Nevesa, the, the card as a purple was was kind of forgettable, but she does a good job in this episode. And that that black and white outfit is banging. So I'm really and a giant prop to boot. Yeah, I like Spock the, uh... is on fire in this scene. They did a lot of great stuff with it. I'm really happy this cruise in the game. So I'm I, I I'll vote you, S. I mean, I mean I, I'll I will vote S as well because I'm just so happy that her daughter even cosplays as her as well. 
like the actress really? that plays Nevesa. Yeah, uh, her daughter went, or is it daughter or granddaughter? I can't remember. But actually, went out and cosplayed as 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 a grandmother at conventions. Like, I think that's amazing. The and actress the card- is in a good cards like this really make a, make me pay a little bit more attention to the wardrobe. I never really, you know, cared yeah. or pay that much attention, but when they feature something like this, just a fantastic choice. Um, you know, it gives me a lot more deeper appreciation for how much effort was put into the, even the original series, but certainly, you know, the, the more recent ones too. Oh, we're looking like this a actress ass. is in a Twilight Zone episode, so we <laughs> she may pop up on our channel again at some point. Uh, okay, okay. How about uh, the long stand, the most long standing Trek actor of all time, Grady Clint Howard? Uh, let me just try and reduce the size of. Do you know what? I'll just, just turn them off. Hang on. Grady, um, you are my knight in shining armor, and, and I, I love you. you. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot wait to do karaoke with you, uh, Dan. <laughs> you <laughs> made me what I am. At. <laughs> I oh, wow, wow, Jesus! Don't stop. Let okay, me so... drink your Tranya. Sorry. <laughs> oh, shy, shy, shy saying Amy Rydell is her daughter and she played Nevesa on okay. an episode of Star Trek Continue. So, well, not just oh, a cosplay. That's great. So, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's great. Uh, I think I've got to go A here because it is, it's it's like technically it. well done. It's just that he's dressed like a bum, so it doesn't really stand out. But that who the, that's who the character is. Yeah, they did a great job of the boots here. It's monochromatic, though. His skin tone's the same as his jacket. That's a little difficult. Yeah, but a again, we, we talked about this with, with UBQB that, you know, he just a very dark scene in general. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult. Dan stays up late and writes down these dad puns, and he's just waiting. He's got them in the barrel ready to fire. I'm always locked and loaded, man. I'm especially loaded tonight. Thanks to Cerevis. <laughs> <Thanks Christo. laughs> <Christo. laughs> Walker. Anyway, uh, where are we up to? He's an A. He's an A. Okay. Walker. He's an A. This is the best stream ever, guys. <laughs> what about festive Luxana Troy from Star Trek Nemesis? It's good. Ooh, incredible. What? From Star Trek? No, no. I, you said Luxana Troy, and I pulled her. Sorry, and Guinan. Guinan on the screen. No, no, got festive Guinan. Why? I, yeah, okay. All right. Pretend it's Guinan. <laughs> Pretend that Idol is competent at his job, and this it's is Guinan. It's of data. <laughs> wow. Like because she was that. What, what was she? She was a campaign or mega giveaway recently. So every time I campaign. hear festive, yeah. I, hear, I say locks on it. Okay, festive. Holding Guinan. champagne in the campaign. Guinan. She don't like. She don't like. She don't like. Another very well done. Another kind of monochrome. It was an idiot. <laughs> Thank you, Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a prop. Props are good. I think I'll Seriously, go. A. Do we need to do welfare check on Frank? Is he okay? He's he's probably buying packs at store. Star Trek. <laughs> he's, he, he's he's he hasn't spent in so long. He's just <laughs> tapping <laughs> buy again, withdrawal. buy again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the de- uh, the level of detail the, the 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 fine detail they got on her outfit is really remarkable. It's uh, you know I, I like the geometry. You know, it just breaks up the, the nice, roster. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. It's good all. all right, let's go I for think a fits. Oh, I say why well, I got confused. Let's go for fascination. La- Luaxana Troy. She was the one underneath. I don't believe it. you. It's fascination. Festive Gaiden. Yeah, it's, you can see. You can see. Dan, can you confirm that's who's on the screen right now before I hit start? <laughs> I, I do see, I do see Luaxana. Okay, pulls up in chat, folks. There she is. Uh, something's off with her in this. Her her head looks very bit, cubical. Yeah. And she's doing the hula. I tell you what it is. It looks like someone has is, is doing their anim. This far, no farther. <laughs> it looks like. Uh, thank you, Walt. Uh, it looks like someone's animated, like made their first three D model and put them in a pose for the first time, and they're like, "This is the default pose they're doing for them." Yeah. Yeah. I guess B. It's not terrible. From from the neck down, she looks fine. Mm. Just the the head is a little <laughs> rhomboid dronagar. Uh, yeah. Idol idol likes her from the neck down. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's um, eh, the 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 hair isn't done quite right. It, there's a weird. There's a high level of detail on the top of her head, and then where it hangs down below is just like really fuzzy. It's really strange. I don't get it. Dude, if they would release the high res art for these oh. for every crew, that would be so nice. Instead of these little two by two Triscuit screens, we got to look at this on. 
All right, what did Chad vote? B? Uh, B. Oh, it We're a B. B. I need to clean my glasses. Uh, okay, next up <clears throat> is Visions Uhura. Uh, is that the name of the screw? Uhura, Uhura, in, in, Uhura in Visions, it's called. Okay. Which is basically... Pull I, up I, in chat. I think this is weird because I get what they're trying to do. This is Uhura, she's sort of like in a Fort different realm and things like that. But they've yeah. just kind of like taken taken a sealer and put a bit of smoke around her <laughs> dun, 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 dun. yeah a little bit yeah smoke on a hoorah so normally i like these special effects on crew this one is kind of distracting because it's not part of the image just overlaid yeah it, it doesn't yeah, they just up the transparency on some stock image and threw it distracts it me a little bit so yeah i'd probably go see on this yeah but... let's see <laughs> they, they did Uhura well enough, then they just kind of distracted from it. So, Also, Visions is the name of uh, the Enterprise's bar, isn't it? Is that is that what they're trying to infer here? I believe? I think that's what they said at the time. It, is that the uh, one where they can't draw power from while the ship's life support is failing? No, that's Picard. To... Okay. <laughs> Alright, it's a B. It's a B. Let's go for... Hey, how about our favorite plumber of 2023? It's Vadic, Captain Vadic. Okay, I thought you were going to say not... Luigi. I couldn't figure out where you're going with the plumber thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like the prop, but that, that face is Yeah, not... the face is bad. Let right. me zoom on the face. Hang on. No, please don't. Oh, God, no. What did I just enlarge there? Hang on. <laughs> what did I just <laughs> enlarge, I just enlarge something? It may be the Cerveza Crystal meme. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the, the the face is bad. I think the I, other I hate to be an bad. armchair art critic, but yeah, no, this is this isn't doing it here. And the rest of her is good. There's like good detailing on on, on the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> the chat has worked out how to trigger Cerveza Crystal. I have. Uh, oh no. God, it's, it's become sentient. <laughs> it's all over me. Yes, yeah, Anson, it's all over me. I mean, Frank is missing us at our most unhinged right now. <laughs> Wait. Oh, random clip. I thought someone had gift subbed. I was like, oh. Okay. Uh, Frank, sa uh, Frank? Frank says C. I'm sure he does say C. Chat says C as well. All right, next up is... Oh, my gosh. Battle Beverly Crusher. Here we oh go. God. Here's your Holy D, Holy fuck. If this doesn't get a D, what are we even doing here? I'm shutting this stream down. Jesus Christ. Hold on. Oh, wait. If you guys vote her into S tier, I we will do Timeline Stalks 101. We need a biomolecular physiologist in here. This man, man is dying. Is dying. Ladies, that is not oh, Gates McFadden. Look at that face. That is not even... What have they done? Who drew this? Did they take freaking... Somebody else. I'm trying to think of who she looks like. Did she take... No, that's, that was Smith. my face. Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer that, 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 was, <laughs> that was my face when they said, uh, we're, we're going to increase the cost of medical qubits for equipment. Yeah. That, that was the face I gave them. Yeah. The gun is, yeah, you're right. Jeez. The gun isn't even the correct perspective. This is just, this is like, a, a, this is AI work. Well, no, it's not AI work, but AI No, would be AI could better. do better than this. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad chat have, have resonated with us as well. This is I'm gonna put it in D already because This is rough. This is rough. This She's is She's got resting Bev face, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Resting Gates face. Dude, Bev's so stunning. Like why would they I do know, this? To her? I know, even Gross. even nowadays, like even even in a in a oh, her elderly years, she is still she's still got it. But alright, how about I love this crew. Power ransom. This is going to be a, a high or a low rating. This is going to be an S for me. It's definitely an galvanizing S. artwork. It's so good. I I do wish this was the fleet boss battle instead. I think yeah, that would have been a I lot do. more fun. Yeah. But at, at least they made they put him on display somewhere where where people have to look at his art. So that's it's so good. It's great. It's a fun episode. I think it's the season three, two, two or three opener. I forget which one it is. It's a great episode. And I love the resolution. It is just literally Mariner kicking him in the nuts. That's it. That's the reason he comes out of Godhood. <laughs> yeah, this is looking like an easy S. Easy. Chat's already decided. Yeah, chat has decided. All right, ransom is 
Wow. I, I do kind of want to see uh, like a human photorealistic version of this with like a per an actual person's face well, and just see what they do with yeah. it because that would be interesting. Or we may, I mean, if they ever, ever do any more Lower Decks uh, crossover stuff, then maybe, maybe they'll do it. I do want them to do more of that because the last one was so good. All right, how about, and uh, this one is going to be a, a D for me, Mbenga and Oriana. Not for Mbenga, but what did they do to poor Oriana? <laughs> Someone said it looks like a small monkey on his back. <laughs> like, this is not, not this is good a small person. Like, they have like she's wearing like a drama mask or something. Like yeah, the, the tragedy and the comedy. And even even Benga doesn't look like that ever yeah. in the show. So. Like it's not too bad when you zoom, when you zoom in, but when you zoom, if you're if you're viewing it from let's like, say timelines distance from from like here, it looks bad. Just the way the lighting hits like that part of the nose that goes to the eyes makes it look really smooth. It's it's bad. It's terrible. And the outfit is done fine. Everything every again everything from the neck down is is fine here. And it's like they just took the smudge tool to everything above it because it didn't look mm. quite right. So they're like all right, just fudge it and send it. I do wish that Babs was giving me a piggyback ride, so yeah. I'll give it half a point for that. <laughs> There's something about Artist 2 that seems like they take a picture and then they just do something to it that just makes it look just weird. Just make it worse. It just makes it, yeah, it makes it worse. We'd be better off with the picture. Yeah, it's a D. It is a D. All right, we got two more left. We got two more left. Where the fuck is Frank? Uh, let's go for Paradise Spock. I kind of love this. Look at that. Really? I really, I kind of do. This does not pull up in chat. This does not look like Leonard Nimoy. No, in the face. it is. Is it because he's smiling? It's the neck. It's got such a thick neck Oh, he neck does have a bit of card. big shoulder syndrome, doesn't he? Yeah. Again, they just kind of took took a, a reference photo from the face and just kind of mm. pasted it on here. <clears throat> Actually, kind of looks a bit more like um, Zachary Quinto. I I won't say it looks like what Spock would look like if I drew him from memory, because that would be harsh. I'm not a good drawer, but it's not it's not quite well, Leonard Nimoy. I think it's okay. No, no, I no, I don't think it's that bad, but it's it looks like he has Spock one locutus eye Spock. and one regular eye. <laughs> That's good. It's Jim Carrey playing Spock, yeah. Don't he probably would. He he does have the, the hair, yeah. Yeah. Uh that's a good flower though. It's good prop work. Give him props. Give him props. No, seriously, where the fuck is Frank? <laughs> Look, Frank is dead to us. He's okay. not coming on number 100. He's out. He's out of the show. He's out. All right, last but not least. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to delete. Uh, let's do that. And Well, it is none other than Harcourt Fenton Mud. All right, pull up and chat, folks. This is good. This has got to be S. Nice. Oh. <laughs> just for the belt buckle well Over. Oh, right. okay I see yeah you see <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course it is without a doubt uh, okay yeah because uh, oh, yeah, Frank has gone to Chile to go and get himself some Oh, well, with the with the uh, the debatable topic, Harcourt Fenton Mud is Rain Wilson. Get out of here. I know we talked about this elsewhere. If Rain was good, like in his episode, it's nice that he didn't do a one for one take, but come on, dude. Roger Cromill mm. is so good. He redeemed so many terrible episodes. He did. Why are we waiting for a poll that only has S as yeah, the yeah. answer? <laughs> put him in it, it, might, it might be time to put a buckle on this, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> well done, well done. For the last ever normal timeline stop. Yeah, this will be it. This will be it. I promise this time. I, honestly, I do. Um, <laughs> so, okay, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone for indulging on uh, in our... Uh... Computer. Erase that entire personal log. It's probably for the best. So, if you are not already aware, uh, we will be having our charity show on the 19th of May, our fourth charity show. Uh, we've, and pretty much around the time we will be doing this for four years, Auto. Auto, four years. All right. Guys, you have already raised over $10,000 for charity. Uh, the so charity good. of your choice. So That's remarkable. Yeah, no matter what happens, amazing. you guys have been all-stars. I It really... 
it makes me proud to be part of this community. So yeah. thank you. No, and and I hope we can show up big and enjoy a, a lot of fun on the 19th. Yeah, I'm it's really great. looking like, forward like, to it, guys. Like you say, it's like it's, it's two of my favorite things we do on this channel. One is the award show, and the second one is the um, is the charity show, which is such such good fun. We've got tens of plans for guests, for fun activities. Also, if you've not already, go onto our Discord and vote for the charity you want us to, to, to donate to. Can I, so. can I spoil? Can well, I hint at, this, at a spoiler? Yeah, go so for the, it. So the first guest that we've lined up may or may not have been working on these these section 31 movies so well, some behind the scenes there may, maybe maybe it's maybe, not locked maybe. in yet but We're it's sounding good so uh, <laughs> irony says this surface is, is sorry is <laughs> a charity no it is not a charity no. go go check our announcement pa- sorry. i feel like that cat you know that cat jam cat that, yeah. that does the thing when he's banging on the bongos yeah Go check a crystal. Uh, go go check a crystal. <laughs> check a <out> crystal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Walt, for the mariachi. Uh, thank you, Walt. The charities you can support or choose to support. Uh, we are looking at either the Marsha P. Johnson Institute for uh, the Human Rights of Black Transgender People or the Pollinator Partnership. Uh, which is dedicated exclusively to the protection and promotion of pollinators and their ecosystems. There's also the Ocean Conservancy, uh, protect the ocean from today's greatest global challenges. We've got the World Central Kitchen, who is helping provide fresh meals to communities in need, including Japan, Gaza, Israel and Ukraine. And Project Hope, a global health and humanitarian organisation that believes in the power of hope during disasters, conflicts and health emergencies. So please go and um choose from one of those you can choose multiple there's not a limiting poll and the one that gets the most you've got you've got a week uh and by uh what did i say i think i said the 22nd of march we will choose our charity that we will be supporting and yeah we've got some fun things planned there's another star trek adventures that stars has got um which is gonna sound very fun and we've got some other guests coming on maybe not as high profile as last year but we're gonna have a lot of good fun things happening we're gonna have way a to undercut you yeah, i, I know, just I said know. they're involved in the section 31 movie hello yeah, well, yeah but people are gonna say are you getting michelle yo on and no we are not getting michelle yo no, on like no. come on i don't think anyone said that but no thanks for yeah, putting no. that idea in their head exactly so yeah um yeah poor frank he can't be here for that no it's gonna By the be way fun. i don't want to spoil it but our guest is gonna be everywhere uh, everything everywhere. all at once <laughs> yeah. no, I, uh, no. <laughs> Is a she is if you haven't listened to it go check out the big book podcast uh for your up-to-date timeline news um hosted by these guys and it's probably far more professional and less madcap than this show is um, that's a given yeah um also if you are a twilight zone fan as well as our tre- our bi-weekly trek tracks we have also begun uh watching the twilight zone it's my first exposure to the twilight zone um and i'm really enjoying it we've been watching out those are coming out on tuesdays is it auto yeah every tuesday every tuesday we've got the first couple of episodes gone up now and it's honestly it's a blast go watch the episode and go watch our review of it uh we're having next week time. episode three three of us voted it a 10 out of 10 so we all really love episode three coming which up next week so keep an eye out for that what's that is that the um uh, they'll find out next week oh, when it releases on our channel. They will. No spoilers they will. yeah um and on that note Thank you, Frank. <laughs> thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you. Also Frank is a coming. construct of our mind. He doesn't yeah. really exist. <laughs> he really does. He's a hallucination all the way down. He's the Dow Rock. All of our ire was focused oh into his rants. You know, he's spent. <laughs> he's sent back. This is why we have you here, Dan, Dan, uh, Dan because of the freaking left field story you tell at pulls. Um, I can't wait to get onto that on our next track track, actually. But um, oh, we'll be back. Uh, me and Stars will be back tomorrow to play some Mass Effect. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next week. What are we doing next week? Some stuff. Check it out. Uh, all on the Discord. All on the live stream. Uh, I'm sure I know what I'm doing. Uh, thank you very much. Any last words, guys, before we go? Uh, the, thanks the to 99th. everybody in chat. Y'all been great today. Really, really fun. Uh, glad to be a part of this, guys. You invited me on very late in the game. This will actually be my first charity show, so I guess I'm a featured guest. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, this is this has been great. Glad to be brought into your fold, and it's been so much fun, guys. Always so happy to have you. By the way. If you if you vote for the kitchen charity, Idol will probably eat another burger while children in Africa are starving to death. So that's Ooh. something to look forward to. I'll do two this time. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Live long and prosper. Live logs and proper. Surface a crystal. You're sitting on that one. <laughs> I'm finish it now. <laughs> Later. Later, we here as kids.
I think I'm a detective.